Since it appears you're calling back into a live show, we are reconnecting you now. Your show will go live in five seconds. Four, three, two, one. Blog Talk Radio. Brothers and sisters, this is Elder Ricard Shiar, the Gathering of Christ Church here. We're here with a very, very important broadcast, okay? Uh, right before we go on, let's just make sure you all can see and hear us clearly. Some people say it's an echo. Maybe it's because I was singing along with the broadcast that something else was going on. Uh, who knows? But... I'm here before you today with our new radio broadcast, and it should sound fine. We went, we've been setting up for the last four hours, three, four hours, yeah. <laughs> so it better be clear. I'll tell you that. How, how you doing today, brother? Outstanding, Elder. Outstanding. Pleasure to be here today. You know, this is, I think, two, day, two weeks in a row, I think, right? Two weeks in a oh, row. Crazy. And, I, oh, yes. crazy. and we do have Elder uh, Lawyer with us, I think. Lawyer, are you with us? Yes, sir. Yes, sir. Shalom. Shalom, how are you doing Captain. this evening, uh, Elder, brother? Doing well, sir. How about yourself? I'm doing well, brother. Just stay in the background and make sure you bring that uh, Bible. I have my Bible ready. I, got, I have my key, keyword study Bible, KJV. Um, okay, so I'm ready to rock. 
we have an important, a very, very, very yeah, I'm important excited. broadcast. I'm excited about, I'm the excited show. about this broadcast yeah. myself, yes. Uh, we have a guest this evening. Our guest this evening, believe it or not, is Dr. Theron D. Williams. <laughs> He's the pastor of a particular book called Bible. The Bible is black history. Uh-oh. And a matter of fact, hey, it might get a little controversial this evening, brothers and sisters. Hey, hey, I'll tell you what. <laughs> I just spoke with uh, uh, Mr. Uh, Williams, very nice gentleman. And I said, you may have noticed an uptick in sales because if anything, even if the doctrine is not the same at this time, we, prom we promote the awakening on every level. When a pastor stands against opposition, by presenting the truth to our brothers and sisters who are suffering in these ghettos, in these inner cities, who have no knowledge of themselves. And there's a lot of pastors who have dropped the ball, who refuse to tell our brothers and sisters in the areas, in, in these war-torn areas, mm -hmm. that we're suffering a curse due to the disobedience of our forefathers and continue to teach our people that it doesn't matter who we are, all things are relative, and that, and that the law is done away with, okay? I think that's Dr. Theron Williams. Let me see, let me see if that's him. Uh, did you just come in, Dr. Did Theron? I are you with me? Did I miss you? Yes, I'm with you. Hey, sir, you didn't miss me. You're right on time. As a matter of fact, I think everyone here, you hear, I just poured you in with the rest of us. How you doing, Doc? I'm doing good, Elder. How are you tonight? Hey, I am blessed by the best, and I don't know if you've seen the Gathering of Christ videos, but his name is Ahaya, his name, the great I am. And, and I thank the Most High for his blessed son, Jesus Christ. And uh, I thank the Most High for you, uh, you know, really uh, etching out a little time for this broadcast this evening. How are you doing, Doc? Man, I'm doing good, man. My pleasure, man. Thank you for having me at the gathering. Man, I, I really do appreciate it. All right. All right. Let's jump right in. Uh, right now, and be sure, brothers and sisters, as you come in, hit that like button because it's going to drive the traffic. It's going to let everyone know that the broadcast is going live. It's only a short broadcast this evening, two hours maximum. Okay, so please hit that like button so we can drive the traffic right now. It's 500. It should be up, up with 1,000 to 1,500 within the next seven to 10 minutes, hopefully, okay? Yep. All right. Uh, do me a favor, uh, Doc, if you can, uh, right now, because I'm hearing a little feedback. Am I on a speakerphone, or are you listening to the broadcast on the outside of us? How is that going on your side? Uh, no, I'm, no, I don't. I'm just talking to you regularly, man. Okay, so there's no speakers, and you're not listening to anything in the back. Great. That's great. All right. Dr. Right. Theron D. Williams, the author, the author of the book, and I want you all to see this if you haven't purchased the book already, Okay. Uh, the author of the book, special guest, folks. Yes, hit that like button as you come in. Come on. Bible is black history. Now, I have a lot of questions for you, Doc, today. And, of course, we must be cordial and respectful here because that's what it's about, brothers in Christ. We need you to introduce yourself to all the brothers and sisters out there. Who are you? Where you are from? Just introduce yourself, even though, you know... <laughs> We had a broadcast on you about two, uh, about two weeks ago, two weeks ago weeks, yeah. for about two, three hours. <laughs> well, Tell us about yourself. Okay. <laughs> well, I'm, I'm, well I'm, I'm a native of Detroit, Michigan. Um, grew up in the Jeffries Housing Projects in Detroit, Michigan, and um, left there at 19 to enroll in college at Virginia Union University and uh did an undergraduate and a graduate degree there and uh, pastored a small church while I was there. And upon completion of my seminary training, I was elected uh, pastor of Mount Carmel Church in Indianapolis, where I now reside, and um, traveled back and forth to the University of Chicago to study 
uh, did a doctorate there and um, uh, pastored my church, you know, family, you know, children and and that type of thing. So, yeah. And, and I've always had this, this passion for black studies, you know, the study of our people, the history of uh, African-Americans. And um, I always knew intuitively, Elder, that there was a close relationship, a kindred spirit, if you will, uh, between the African-Americans and the ancient Hebrews. I, it, it was just something, you know, when I read their story um, in the Bible, there was a connection. I couldn't put my finger on it. I couldn't figure out why I felt so connected to the biblical community. And, you know, I started doing my research and in in my study and came up with this. Actually, it was the millennials, Elder, who... Uh, started questioning Christ, questioning the validity of the scriptures, started questioning the origin of the Christian church. Mm. They even uh, began to question um, the existence of Jesus Christ, if he existed or not. And, of course, you know, there was a a mad dissection uh, of young millennials from the black church, And, you know, I was conducting exit interviews with these young people as they were leaving, and they all had a similar complaint about the theology of the church, about the the efficacy um, of of the church, the legitimacy of the Bible, the historicity of Jesus. They they questioned all of that. And so I did a started researching uh, to see if they were onto something, to see if their uh, questions were legitimate. And it drove me deeper and deeper and deeper into this. And so I conducted a, it started off as a one month Bible study to refute everything that they had heard, getting all this misinformation and disinformation off the internet. And, um, you know, the internet has algorithms, particularly these um, social media platforms. They have algorithms and they lump people together on the basis of what they think what they believe how many likes and clicks and all of that so what you have is a virtual community of millennials who believe the same thing that jesus was a fake the bible conspired with white supremacy to keep the african docile and non-resistant to slavery all of that and so and the reality is many of the young people in my church were a part of this virtual community And so I conducted, it was supposed to be a one-month Bible study to refute all of that. It turned out, it ended up being nine months. Mm. And it really set my young people free, really enlightened them to help them to understand uh, what exactly was going on. And I saw how it affected the life of my congregation. And so I took those notes, put them together, and wrote this book, The Bible is Black History. Okay. All right. All right. And I know a lot, I, I mean... There's so many areas we can uh, talk about initially. Mm-hmm. I'm interested in it. I'm sure other brothers and sisters who are going to call in. The number is 515-605-9327. They may have some questions, but I have a few lined up for you, Doc. The first thing I would, okay. like, the first thing I would like to ask, right, because I've heard your story before as far as other pastors saying or just regular old people saying, well, listen, I was tired of my belief being questioned. And, and stomped upon. So I went and began to research and realized that there was some truth to the fact that these blacks who are suffering in the ghetto fits the prophecies of the book of Deuteronomy 28 and the other people who are out there claiming to be who they're claiming to be really don't fit that piece of the puzzle like uh, a torn people that would go into captivity wouldn't be ruling the world at the very end but I digress. What I need to ask you, uh, Dr. D, we have Dr. D, uh, Dr. Theron D. Williams on, uh, the author of the book, The Bible is Black History, for those who just come in. Uh, my question to you, sir, is even though what spearheaded your search is, is what's like every shepherd's task is to make sure you're protecting and helping the sheep. So 
your initial reaction to this was in, was in Shirley Shepherd mode, right? But yeah, right. But this is what I have to ask you. Even before you went into your studies, right? You you had to, mm -hmm. you had to have known that something was going on with our people of biblical proportion, but just couldn't put two and two together. And it was something that wasn't being taught in modern day theology. It's as if they're staring their they're staring us away from the key component. And that's us connecting with the Bible as the people. So the question I'm going to ask you, sir, is because what you're going into, and it's probably just the beginning, you probably want to let us know when did this journey start with you finding out you were an Israelite. But through this journey, I know I have been faced with much opposition. I mean, because, it, because it's not just a black or white thing. It's all the responsibility that comes with realizing that we may be or we are the people of the book, right? So, mm -hmm. so my question is to you, have this been welcome in the Christian community, what, you're, what you have delved into? Or have there been blowback with you actually researching this particular history? And if so, blowback by who? Well, you know, Elder, it's funny you ask that. And people ask me that all the time, you know, are you getting any blowback? Are you getting any uh, resistance? The truth is, it seems like this book is coming at a time when our people are welcoming this. I I've not got any blowback at all, hmm. if, if you can believe, from the black community. Okay. Now, you know, I'm on, the, and I I'll tell you a story here in a minute, but I've been everywhere around the country, you know, lecturing and doing PowerPoint presentation on this. And elder people are hungry for it. Our people are hungry. They knew intuitively that they were, that our ancestors were the authors and the heroes and the heroines of the Old Testament and the New Testament. They knew it intuitively. They just needed someone to help walk them through it in a more scholarly type way, to, to use scholarship to affirm what they already knew intuitively. So I really haven't had any pushback. The only pushback, and if I can call it pushback, is that I've had some in our community who would raise the question, what does it matter? You know, uh, that the people of the book were people of African descent, were black folks. What, what does it matter? that what what color Jesus was. And my response is always the truth should always matter. You know, it's it it, it matters because it's the truth. You know, and number that's that's number one. Number two, it matters because now when you read the holy book, you read it through a different hermeneutic. You see yourself in the story. You know, you you see your you, you see uh, your ancestors in the story. This is our story. Mm. And that adds a nuance that adds a power to it. So that now, man, when I go back and read it, when I'm reading the epistles and, or when I'm reading Jesus and he's talking about the Gentiles at one time, I thought he was referring to me when I read about Paul and he said to the Jew first and then to the Gentile, I put myself on the side of the Gentile. But when I came into this knowledge that when Jesus said, talked about the Gentile, he wasn't talking about me. Mm. When he talked about the lost sheep of the house of Israel, he's talking about me. Mm. You know, that, that added a dimension to the re It didn't change the biblical text, but it sure added something to it, man, that makes it powerful. And. Mm. This is why I'm asking you right now that particular question, because in this journey, I'm sure you ran into others. And we're going to talk about the others in a moment. Who are now, I would say, touching on this, not because they're looking to help liberate our people and substantiate that we're the children of Israel. They're more so 
dubbing into it by force. Why? Because they're losing control over the theological narrative. And I'm speaking of the them right now. Where now they have, mm-hmm. they have theologians coming out. They have apologetics coming out. They have Jesuits coming out. They also have a guy by the name of Messer that you probably ran into in the midst of your journey. He so happened to be a Messianic Jew. Have you heard of Messer? I think I have. He's a, he's a European Jew or what? No. He's a Christian Jew. He's by the name of Messer. Okay. No, no, no. I don't, right. I don't think I have. Yeah, because <clears throat> someone says, turn up my volume. Let me turn it up. One moment. Uh, let's see here. All right. Just, I had to turn it up some here. Okay. Because in... In studying your book and going through it, because, of course, the book was sent to me and many of our churches within our church and others who follow our broadcast doctor, uh, pastor, has purchased your book. Um, Okay. We notice there's some familiar theology out there uh, that Messer is now trying to bring forth to not confirm that we are the children of Israel, but to pacify Uh, The example I can give you, they're trying to make it more so we just need to show black people that they exist in the Bible beside Jewish people. So they'll go into a story about an Ethiopian who married Moses and have us find value in the Ethiopian and not Moses. They'll go into Mm -hmm. other Hamitic people that were revered or respected. And that's enough to some degree for us to say, you know what, we as Gentiles who, who, aren't, is, who aren't Israelites still have value because we can find ourselves in the book as Gentiles when really these guys are just throwing stuff in the way. My, my, thoughts, my thoughts for them is this, and I, want, and I want to hear your perspective. If you weren't willing to tell me the truth of myself when before I knew anything. I don't want to hear anything from you now. And I'm speaking about these other people who now are coming with, I can show you something black now, now that we're on every corner, that we are waking up the earth, the gospel is being spread and our people realizing throughout the earth that the kingdom is for us first. Not to say the other people can't get in because if you follow Christ, you can get in. But that changes everything. So I don't want to hear nothing about no other people coming in who claiming to be our people with some information now based on the fact that they're losing their, they're losing their control over us. What say, you, what, what say you on that? Because now we have other people coming with other persuasions with an opinion on this when they said nothing, when we had no value realizing that we had no insight at all on our history, our rich history, written of in the Bible, Moses, Jeremiah, Jesus Christ, the disciples, that the the ministry we call Christianity today started with black people. (laughs) Right? So Yeah. Yeah. So 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 what say you on that? First of all Well first of all, Elder, let me let me say this. Yeah. That that Israel is a part of Africa. It is on the continent of Northeast Africa. Exactly. I mean, that's indisputable. All you have to do is look at a map. You know, you know the landmass that um, was removed, that physically separated Israel from Africa, created the Suez Canal back in the, in the 1800s. But prior to that, during Jesus' day, during biblical times, Israel was a part of Africa. So these people are people in the Bible. They are Africans. If Ethiopians are Africans, if Nigerians are African, um, and because their land is a part of the continent, well, if Israel is a part of the continent, that would make the Israelites African as well. But you'll never hear that. That's number one. Number two, um, 
people will always try to once they're let, let me I got so much in my head right now. Let, let me go back and say this. The defection of our church for, for of of um, young millennials, their defection is a symptom of what's happening in our church, in in the black church itself. That is, the black church is a is an evolving, living organism. It's not just an organization; it's an organism. It started evolving in the first century. According to my Bible in the book of Acts, when the church was born, it started to grow and evolve and mature uh, from that point. We're at a critical point right now where the church is undergoing a transition. And one of my arguments as I go throughout the country is that the transition that the church is going through, it is this emergence of this information that you've always known, Elder, and that you're leading your people in. This information is starting to well up in the church, in the black community, Praise and people high. need to hear it. And I'm thinking, and I believe, that the church of the future, the black church will not survive if the black church doesn't come back to its roots, mm. because this mm. is what our people are hungering for. Mm. Man, they are tired of this health wealth stuff. They are tired um, of this name it, claim it, this prosperity gospel. They're sick of it mm. because they've, we've got a large enough sample size now going back to Reverend Ike up to now, the, the prosperity preachers of today. We have a large enough sample size now where our people understand that nobody is getting rich except the people that's preaching prosperity. The rest of us <laughs> remain in poverty. Mm -hmm. <laughs> so we, we got a large enough sample size to know that that's not where it is. But our people are searching, and if we don't gather around this theology, and it's not a, oh, it's not a new theology, it's the theology of the Bible, and see ourselves as a part of the biblical text, the authors and the heroes of the Old Testament and New Testament, then our church will not survive. The black church will not survive as we once as we once knew it. Now, having said all of that, we now have a movement that's countering this welling up, this groundswell of information and knowledge. And understand, bro, that real revolution is never top down. It's always bottom up. Mm -hmm. So it's the grassroots who are collecting around this information that you share, that I've shared in my book, The Bible is Black History. Let me digress. The writing of this book, the challenge was not to have, have page volumes. The challenge was to winnow down this information so that it can be digestible to the average person. I was not writing this book for the academies. I wasn't writing this book for the scholars. I wrote it for the average, ordinary individual that may have no academic training or perhaps have no theological training or no formal education beyond high school at all. They just need to have the ability to read and comprehend. And that's why the book reads so simply. That's why the book may appear to some scholars to be watered down and all of that. I don't care about that. What I wanted to do was to get this information into the minds of the grassroots, everyday, ordinary person, because that's where revolutions start. If you study revolutions around the world, it never in the history of the world, it never started from top down. It started from bottom up. If you look at Moses, his revolution, man, that started from the bottom. It didn't start with Pharaoh. It started with an outcast named Moses. When you look at the New Testament, the revolution that took place in the New Testament didn't start with Caesar. It started with a brother from Galilee and the peasant region of Galilee from the town of Nazareth, a young poor man, a young poor peasant, sparked that revolution that we see in the New Testament. All revolutions start with grassroots. Mm. So we have this groundswell of information 
And I thank God in some respects for the Internet and for social media. We have a groundswell, man. People get this knowledge and the people who in whose best interest they are watching, they see what's happening. And so, yeah, man, they're going to interject their counter narrative to try to say, OK, don't take this thing too far. There are some black people in the Bible. We got Solomon. We got Nimrod. We got Queen of Sheba. We got the Ethiopian eunuch. You know, we got uh, the Syrophoenician woman. We, we got so. So y'all just calm down. <laughs> we will acknowledge that there are black people in the Bible. My argument is all of them are black. Mm-hmm. <laughs> They're all African. Oh, hold up now. Hold up I mean, now. The, the, uh, hey, 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 Pastor, I'm with you. But there's one in particular who is it. And uh, so I'm going <laughs> to, he was also in that African area, but we're going to talk about that in a moment. Uh, we have about one more hour. We're going to bring in some phone calls. But before that, Doc, what I want to do is we're going to go into not just what the black opposition is or hasn't been. Uh, I think the most high that most people are, our people are, after being tired of the prosperity movement is welcoming this awakening with open arms and realizing that we black people who have suffered are the children of Israel, according to the Bible. But we're going to come back with, I'm going to ask you, what has been any opposition, if any, from the other side? OK, we're going to talk about that in a moment. I just going to I just want to bring out a commercial. I need you all to hit that like button and we're going to come right back. We have Dr. Uh, Theron D. Williams. That's right. Theron D. Williams, the author of let me get it here. The author of is right before you on your screen. The Bible is black history. We'll be right back. Just put it on mute, and we'll be right back, sir. Okay. Oh, that's why. The elders of the Gathering of Christ Church would like to invite you to enroll in the new upcoming Hebrew and Bible Academy, which begins December 23rd. The Academy is a three-month online course which includes 12 live biblical lessons taught by the elders every Sunday from 9 a.m. to 2 p.m. Eastern Time. We deliver weekly analyzed news with Elder Rakan and Deacon Shapat with commentary on how it relates to Bible prophecy. Elder Rakan insightfully teaches each online Bible lesson in a personal classroom setting to enrich your learning experience. Additionally, Elder Loya provides an introduction to the original Hebrew language, including grammar and conversational Hebrew. For new and returning students, now is a great time to enroll, as we are happy to announce that we have added never before taught lessons on Daniel 9, the prophecy of the final seven years, the battle of Armageddon, and the 1,000 year reign. This intensive course has been meticulously customized and enriched with PDF booklets and downloadable videos, automatically emailed to you after every live lesson. Enroll today at HistoryTimes.org or email us at gathering as one at AOL.com. We look forward to seeing you there. Okay. All righty, all righty, all righty, all righty, all. Thank you, brothers and sisters. Yes, 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 yes. We are back. We're back with Dr. Theron D. Williams, the author of The Bible is Black History. You can call in 515-605-9327. Okay, let me bring uh, the doctor back on. Are you with me, sir? 
I'm with you. Okay, let's jump right in. Now, Christ broke down this, uh, this precept in Revelation, and I don't want to get too controversial needing this, this, uh, this channel that we've worked so hard to preserve. Christ said in Revelation 2 and 9, I know thy works, thy tribulation and poverty, but thou art rich. And I also know the blasphemy of them which say they are Jews and are not, but are the synagogue of Satan. Come to find out there's some people out there who wanted Christ dead, who hate his guts till this day. To some degree, doctor, and it's, a, it's really about Christ, this awakening is his prophecy. He said that eventually that our people would run in to the wilderness after being destroyed by the Romans, and I'm sure you picked it up on your book, and that we would be scattered and enslaved throughout all nations until his return, and that if we were to follow his path, it would lead us back to our original promise, not an African pro promise, but what? A Shemite, an Israelite promise to our father Jacob. So, my, so the question is not whether or not who are the Jews according to the Bible, because it's clear. The question I have is, what say you about... Is there any opposition from the other side? Because if we point out who the Israelites are, it highlights those who are claiming to be Israelites. So mm -hmm. how are you dealing with that? How are you walking that particular tightrope? And I'm sure you are. Well, I mean, first of all, we have to determine what these words are, Hebrew, Jew, Israelite, Israeli, Shemite, they, they are all not synonymous. They, they, they to, to refer to someone as a Jew, first of all, Jewishness is not a race. Jewishness is a religion. Okay. Hmm. The, the, the race, I argue, is Hebrew. That denotes, in my opinion, based upon my research, that denotes their race, so that you can be a Jew and be any color, just embrace Judaism. Yes. In fact, men who don't embrace Judaism, if your mother or your grandmother embrace Judaism, according to their tradition, that makes you a Jew, not by race, because Jew is not a race, but by religion. Okay. So now... So now you have Jewish, you have European Jews who were never in Israel, never in the history of European, of the European race, have they ever been in Israel in mass as a people. They were in Europe in the early 20th century with the height of the anti-Semitic uh, issues that they were experiencing in Europe, it is at that time they migrated all over the world, particularly to the United States and to Israel. When they got to Israel in the, in the early 20th century, the Ottoman Empire, the Turks were there because they had reigned over the world, particularly that part of the world, for several hundred years, and they were Islamic. You know, they, they were Islam. So when they got, in the early 20th century, when they got to Israel, it was predominantly Muslim. You know, there were 750,000 Muslims there when the first Europeans began to migrate into Israel. The, 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 is, the, the Muslims who were there resisted, didn't want them in, but they continued to migrate and they migrated to Israel so much, and there were so many of them, that um, after World War II, when the Ottoman Empire had collapsed and then the British Empire had taken over colonial rule of Israel, after World War II, uh, the British didn't want control over Israel, so they turned it over to the United Nations. The United Nations in 1948 
said, okay, part of this land will be for uh, Islamic people, and the other part will be for European Jewish people. And so that's the tension we have to this day. These two peoples are encroaching upon each other's designated space. But this, that's how they got to Israel. And they have convinced the whole world that they've been in Israel since Abraham. And that's just not true. They were in Europe. Okay. You know, in, in, in 70 A.D., at the collapse of Israel, but under... Okay, I'm going to let you get this point out, but I, I wanted to ask, since you wrote this book, have you received any pushback from those who are, who are Israelis or those who are really... Because believe it or not, they're actually controlling modern-day Christendom as far as the Christian church. The church, Christian church have all totally been co-opted, in which the mainstream churches must support Israel, and that's their choice if they would like to do so. But I'm asking mm -hmm. you, since this resolve and awakening on your side, beginning with helping our youth deal with this onslaught and attack against the Bible, have you received any resistance against it? from that side i've received i've received email you know um and uh, for people who are european jews who have read the book and had a real problem with it um some of them i respond to and some of them i don't because elder i really could care less what they think of us as a people what they think of this research and what they think about what I think, who the original Jewish people are. I could care less. But when I do respond, I refer them to their own geneticists. Okay. Because one of the things, because, because see, when you, when you first of all, academically debunk the notion that they were always in Israel, when, when that doesn't hold water historically, now they have gone genetics. They say, oh, well, uh, our genetic pool goes back to Israel. And then when you scrutinize that, they say, well, it may not be Israel, but it definitely goes back to the Levant. And well, as you know, Elder, the Levant not only comprises of Israel, but it comprises of Iran, Iraq, Arabia, Afghanistan. All of that is part of the Levant. So if your genetic pool traces back to the Levant, doesn't mean that you are necessarily from Israel. Mm -hmm. So now they have gone to DNA and genetics to say our genetic pool is proof that we are indigenous to the land of Israel. Well, you've got their own scholars. Um, Martin Richards is one of the scholars, and um, Harry Oster. Both of those guys conducted studies. In fact, it was called... Um, it's called A Legacy, A Genetic History of the Jewish People. Mm -hmm. And in that study, they determined, they studied um, Ashkenazi Jews. And the, the, the DNA study concluded that the Ashkenazi Jews did not emerge from Israel, but their DNA traces back to Europe. So now you don't have any credible historical data to prove that they were indigenous to Israel. You don't have any biblical data to prove that the European Jew was indigenous okay. to Israel. They tried to go with DNA. Now that has been debunked. They don't have a leg to stand on. They are hey. not indigenous to the land of Israel. See, and, and I'm glad you went there. Uh, we have, for those who've just come on, we have Dr. Theron D. Williams of Mount Carmel Baptist, and he realized through his research that the blacks in America through his research, uh, for the time the Most High have awakened him, that we are in fact the children of Israel and that the Bible is a black man's or a black people's book. I wanted to put that out there for you, 515-605-9327. There's a few things I wanted to touch on going back with, with you, uh, Doc, if you don't mind. Okay? Because I know, I know what it is to be, I, I would say, hit with that reality that, hold up, have they lied to me all my life? 
And not only that, this lie must be so articulated, so put together, this conspiracy, that they, that they must lie on every level. Understanding that there's an inherent spirit within us seeking truth. And I'm going here, sir, is because going back to your point of, of opposition, right? And I'm going to throw this out there just so that we can have a discussion even after this, you and I, and so that the listeners can understand also where the others have ran interference, right? And only going to take me one minute, mm -hmm. doctor, real quick, because we're building, right? Okay. Okay, go ahead. They would rather us look at Ashkenazi or Causaria. They would rather. Because, because the information is so askewed that they can get away through the cloud that comes with the migration that, that, that was in that area for a century before it actually happened with Alexander the Greeks conquering and all these other things which led to Causaria being a multicultural area that they could use for ambiguity to the degree where they would rather you think that they are Japheth. Check this out, Doc. This is where they don't want us to go. They, mm -hmm. don't, they don't want us to go because Causaria, okay, that happened between the 8th and 11th century, more so modern time history, right? When the Muslims mm -hmm. were, were up on the rise and all those things, but a lot of history happened before that. Where they don't want us to go is to Christ. See, mm -hmm. Christ is that way. He's the truth. He's always been the light. And he's always shined on their darkness. This is why these people wanted him dead. So I said, you know what? I'm not even going to point to the history they're trying to point us to. Let's go to Christ's time, right? Right before Christ's time, there was a people called the Idumeans who was in league with uh, Julius Caesar around 37 BC called the Hasmonean dynasty. Come to find out these particular people were named Idumeans because these Idumeans were what you would call uh, uh, north of, of, of the Judean kingdom. Not north, but at the base of the Judean kingdom, excuse me, south of, of, of the, the Judean kingdom where Esau made a little city of, of, of what you would call, of, of what you would call uh, 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 conspirators, like Psalms 83 says, to one day take the northern kingdom or to destroy the northern kingdom. So out of these Adumians, and this is where I'm going at, out of these, these Adumians, they battled and conspired against us all the way up until the Grecian Empire, where if you know about John Hycranus and the Maccabees, there was a great conversion that we read of in the, um, in the Josephus, where a large number of Edomites were converted into Judaism. Now, this is way before there was any such time as Causaria. So now, by the time Christ came on the scene, you had Edomites that had nothing to do with Causarian, white people in rule as Pharisees. And they set up under Anatoper Herod the Great, or the governor, which was a Greek or an Edomite, to be the first foreign Jew over our people during the time of Christ's birth. Right? So, so they, they don't want us to go there. Because there's no ambiguity finding who they are or figuring out who's really in control. Now, one other thing I wanted to pull out. When you go into the Bible, it points us to the book of Jasher. The book of Jasher points us to Esau's grandson, Zepho, who ran into Kittim or Europe and into Italy and set up a stronghold. And they began to take down Europeans which were Asians at that time, in ancient times, the same way they took down the North American Indians 
in our modern time, in our present time, so that they can hide themselves as any other people than the children of Edom, our arch rival from birth. Now, now well, I, let, let me let me, come let me on. jump in, come on, and, and say a word about that the, the, the Hasmonean. Come on, um, I, I take issue with with the Hasmonean. They they were they were people of color. I, I I I don't I don't have any research to indicate that they would be any other race than the race of the indigenous people of the Bible. I have it. The, the, the has, yeah, I have it and I'm going to give you know, it to I, you. I, 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 okay. <laughs> I'm, my, my, my contention is, okay. My, my argument is, is that the, the European Jews that we have now are the descendants of Japheth. Oh, I know. You know, and know. We, they, we have your book. Yeah, and <laughs> yeah, they were yeah they were scattered all over what we know today as Israel. I don't think that the Pharisees were white people, okay. European people. Okay. Um, I believe that they were the Hebrew ruling class. They were the elite class. Um, in Hebrew, and they were in cahoots with the Roman Empire because the Roman Empire was taxing uh, Judah and Israel, particularly Galilee, taxing them into abject poverty. And you had Pontius Pilate, who was the king of uh, of, um, of of Judah. He was ruling Judah, but he was the puppet of the Roman Empire. And then you had the Jewish ruling class that consisted of the scribes, the Pharisees, um, the Sadducees, and the priesthood. All of these, according to my research, all of these are black folks. You know, I mean, they, well, were, they were sucking up to Caesar and exploiting the grassroots people, taxing them into abject poverty. Well, this you is know, what... And Paul... No, go ahead. Paul was a, Paul was a, was a Pharisee. Well, well, and this, we know Paul was a... Yeah, but this, this, this is what I'm saying, though. I'm not saying that, that the Pharisees weren't black. See, it's not being just left or right with this. And I'm saying that is because when you look at the history, there's history of Edomites conquering even from the time of Antiochus and Epiphanes. And I can prove that these are white people, but I digress. We'll talk about that later. What I would like to talk about here is the fact that in the Jewish Targum, and are you familiar with the Jewish Targum? The Jewish what now? Targum, T-A-R-G-U-M. Yes. Okay. Under the Jewish Targum and also in the Talmud, it reads, and not only that, it's proven that they're right, that the Edomites... The Edomites' core fundamental founded place is Rome. And that even the Hebrew breaks them down. When you look at the Hebrew, when it breaks down to the number six, it leads in the Targum. The Jewish people today will tell you in the Targum and in the Talmud that the Romans are Edomites according to history. Now, now what I'm going to do, sir is I'm going to compile the information I have and give it to you so you can deal with the information you have and we'll build together, okay? And, mm -hmm. and then afterwards, mm -hmm. afterwards, we'll sit down together and we'll discuss this. And I'm going to tell you why. Christ says that a nation divided against itself cannot stand. And there has been much controversy within the, the awakening itself, doctor, amongst us blacks who know we're Hebrews, who is Esau, that sworn enemy who would one day destroy his brother. Did he just disappear off the earth? No, he didn't. I, in my class, the Hebrew and Bible Academy, we just taught who's Esau. And we've followed his history from Mount Seir all the way here to America. Verified history that cannot be disputed. And how they, part of Esau's spirit 
is to become a chameleon and hide himself amongst the nations and make us believe he's someone he's not. Okay? And see, that's what I've studied. Now, this is what now, now, now we're gonna digress, and what I'll do is we'll talk offline, and I'm gonna send you the information I have, and I'm sure you'll do some great work with it. Let me ask you this, sir. You mentioned it, it was some serious points that came out earlier, sir. You said that every great movement or revolution started from the bottom up. I made sure I wrote down some serious points you had there, right? That the black church, mm -hmm. that the black church is in a transformation, right? And some would say, uh, uh, some would say, Dr. Williams, that the black church was co-opted a long time ago. To show the strength of the black church, there will be no such thing as civil rights and a if it wasn't for the black church. There will be no such thing as the whole world looking at our people uniting in America against injustice to where other nations can come over here, including the LBGT movement and others, wouldn't be, have a leg to stand on when it comes to civil rights if it wasn't the black church standing in solidarity against the power. To show you, they always understood, I would say, the political power within the black church alone. Now. Through that is what I have to ask you. After that civil rights movement, now, I'm not old enough to know. I know my mother and father tell me about this, but I'm sure you went through this. That I believe what we're learning now, that we're the people of the Bible, would have been taught a long time ago if the church wasn't co-opted a long time ago after the or during or after the civil rights movement. I believe our people were uniting and finding themselves and realizing that we were the people of the Bible at that time. But a co-op happened. Now, I want you to answer to that because you was raised, you were there during that civil rights time. And I think this Yeah, I was I was a, I was I was a kid, man. I'm not as old as you think I am. Uh, okay, I well, a, I was a kid. Okay, well, I'm sorry. I'm sorry. Well, well, let me ask you this then. You're probably my age then. It's like this, sir. Okay, maybe you just have that old soul. You remind me of my pastor, little here in Philadelphia <laughs> when I grew up. But let me ask you this. It seems like that civil rights movement was co-opted, right? That meant a better life. For our children, a better spiritual place for our children so that we can protect ourselves from the enemy and also raise them in the righteousness and, and, and morality of our forefathers. But it seems now that not only has the church turned into the prosperity movement, they have welcomed morality to the degree in which the black church is, has, been, has been taken over by the LBGT gay movement. Now, I'm, I'm, I'm sure I'm straddling the fence right now, but what say you about... Now, it's, we understand all of our people, we struggle with sin and we are to help our people out of sin. That's one thing. But it's another thing to be totally taken over by a political group, you know, who, who is publicly against the moral standings of the Bible. What say you on that, if you want to speak about that at all? Yeah, well, first of all, um, going back to the Civil Rights Movement, um, and you talked about the, the Civil Rights Movement was co-opted, the, uh, the black church has been co-opted, and proof of its co-option is that this information that we're sharing today in 2019 would have been shared back in the 60s. Mm. Um, he, here, is, here is my explanation. Uh, the hermeneutic through which the Bible has been understood is a white Euro hermeneutic. Um, and a hermeneutic is a, is a means and method of interpretation. And we, we established early on in our conversation that Israel is connected to Africa, which makes Israel a part of Africa. And 
Africa, which makes the Bible African literature. Now, if I'm to understand African literature, then I need to understand it through an African hermeneutic. I need to understand the mindset of that African who wrote it, if I'm going to get a clear understanding of what the Bible means. But what has happened to us is that we have taken a Euro hermeneutic to try to interpret an African book, an African, African literature is what we've tried to do. Okay. Now, Euro hermeneutic is important if I'm reading Homer, if I'm reading Shakespeare, if I'm reading the Iliad or the Odyssey, that rich European literature, I, you, I want a Euro hermeneutic. But if I'm reading the book of Isaiah, if I'm reading Jeremiah, if I'm reading the Gospels, I'm going to need an Afro hermeneutic. So what has happened is that this Euro hermeneutic has subtly been imposed upon the Bible that even the most scholarly of us who read the Bible don't understand that we're reading it from a European hermeneutic. It has taken time for that Euro hermeneutic to be peeled away from the sacred biblical text so that back in the 60s, the brothers back there, they knew something was wrong because you had James Cone writing back there. Well, James Cone, not really in the 60s. James Cone was in the late 60s, early 70s, and part mm-hmm. of the 80s. But you had emerging theologians who understood this, and they had started dealing with this. And so for us to suggest that it was some sinister plan of black preachers to team up with the white male supremacy system yeah. to co-opt the Bible to manipulate black people, I think that's treading on thin ice. That's a slippery slope. I don't want to think that Jesse Jackson and Dr. Martin Luther King Jr. and, and Ralph Abernathy and that crowd of clergy, Jays Jackson and uh, Charles Adams and, and those guys who are culturally sensitive and aware of what's going on, I hate to think that they were so weak-minded that they were co-opted by white male supremacy to use the Bible to oppress our people. That's number one. Number two... Oh, I don't think they were the co-opted. Black... I don't think they were co-opted. Well, I mean, you said the, the church, the black church had been co-opted. Yeah, And you can't yeah. co-opt the black church unless you get to the black leaders. Yeah, uh, but you know. but definitely, r- real quick, I wanted to correct one thing. The Hasmonean dynasty were the Maccabees. They were black. I wanted to correct that. I was talking yes, about. Yes, I was I was yes. talking about the Herodians, the Edomites, the Idumeans who were converted during the time of Hycranus, where you had a bunch of Edomites, white people who were converted. But I wanted to drop that. I'm not saying that. I I believe that 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 the civil right leaders were well intended. I believe that these men had a passion and belief of God and love for their people. I'm talking about what happened subsequent to that, where other people who came in who are against Christ and held hands with our people during a transformation, during a time of awakening, that that thing began to turn for the worse, leading to what we have now. Yeah, well, I think, and, and, and even with that, yeah. even, with, even with that elder, um, the church post-civil rights movement, yeah, we did have Reverend Ike. We did have other health, wealth, name it, claim it, uh, prosperity preachers and all that. And, that's, and, and you had that in the, in the New Testament. The New Testament church had people like that. So you're going to always have somebody who's trying to exploit good people for their own selfish gain. That's, that's nothing new. Okay. Uh, and, and, and we, we look at the black church and we look at, yeah, we look at the black church as if this stuff that we're dealing with now, as far as greed is a new phenomenon. And it's not, um, it has always been that. In fact, Paul warns against it. It was so widespread during the early church that Paul wrote to Timothy and said, 
if somebody wants to be an elder, one of the criterion is that he has to be free from the love of money. We, we can't have greedy, money-loving clergy people leading God's people. So that indicates that there was an issue with that earlier on in the New Testament. So to have prosperity preachers and that type of thing, um, to have prosperity preachers and that type of thing going on right now is nothing new. Okay. Well, um, but post-civil rights, um, the church has done tremendous things for our community. Did you not know that the black church was the number one private employer of black people in the nation? Mm. Mm. Did you not know that the black church was by far the number one private employer of educated black men? Mm. Mm. You know, um, did you not know that the black church combined together owns more land and more property than any other black institution in the United States? Mm. Mm. Um, we feed, if the black church came together, if we looked at all of our programs together, we feed tens of thousands thousands of black hungry people every day. Mm -hmm. We send thousands of black students to HBCUs every year. You know, the church, if you shut down the black church, you crippled the black community. Mm -hmm. So I don't have a lot of bad things to say about the black church. Mm -hmm. uh, we are not without fault. We could do much better. And we should do much better. And again, we are in transition, and I think the information that you and I are discussing today will be the next rung in the evolutionary process of the black church. Mm. Um, so I don't, I don't have, <laughs> I, I have nothing, I have nothing but praise, you know, for the black church, man. I mean, because mm. I know what the black church has meant to me and mm. a whole lot of other individuals. Hey, let me say something, Dr. Theron. Uh, listen, I, I mean, Dr. Williams, all right? I know the power of the black church. I mean, I have pastors on either side of my mother and father's family. My, gr my grandfather was a pastor up until the age of 100. He, he, he was blind before he passed and read the Bible in Braille and knew we were ch the children of God. My mother broke it down to me later. Uh, I know the power that's within the church. You understand? Uh, be, without question. And that's why it's upon us to take the responsibility now that's placed upon us in these times, right? And, and this, is what I'm mm -hmm. this is what I'm saying. There's no doubt that our church, the black church, has compromised. Not all. Oh, yeah. But oh, yeah. there's a yeah. certain level of compromising that, you know, that, that our God isn't pleased with. We're using, mm -hmm. we're using grace to teach sin in the black church. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. Right? So, and I this, get that. Listen, yeah, yeah. And, and I don't separate myself. Listen, last I checked, I'm a black man in a black church. I teach all nations. Okay, I, you mm -hmm. understand? So I'm, I'm not separating myself. It's us. It's we. Right. Mm -hmm. <laughs> so now. Let, let yeah, me, I get it. Yeah, I get it. Yeah. So let me ask you this, sir. Have, have, and then, uh, no, no. Go ahead. Say your point, because I want to I'm going to get into something that that's going to. Um, uh, I mean, I wish we had more time, but say your point real quick. Well, you, you the last point you mentioned was the LGBT agenda and how it's is slithering its way into the church. Yeah. I'm assuming with a political agenda to topple uh, our church, to topple the black church. Um, and we, we have gay people in our church. I mean, and we've all, the, the, the black church has always had gay people. You know, I mean, you are an elder uh, uh, of the, of the gathering of, of Christ church. Mm -hmm. There's some gay people in the gathering, brother. You know, um, there are gay people, and there will always be gay people. Yeah, there's sinners. There's is, sinners. There's sinners everywhere. 
But we're not going right, to. But, but we're not going to allow. We're not going to allow a group of sinners, who, whatever their sin may be, take president and begin yeah, to push a political agenda in our church. Yeah. Oh no, I, I'm not going to do that. I'm not going to have any group <laughs> build any political agenda in our church. Okay. You know, not any. You know, I mean, not just LGBT. I mean, if yeah. you want to talk about Black Lives Matter, if you want yeah. to talk about other groups that want to come in and use the church as a platform to uh, to propagate their political agenda, we don't we don't do that. Not for any political group. So let me not just the LGBT community. Let me ask you this, and I don't mean to digress because it's going in somewhere else, and I want to you know reel it back in. I'm we're all over the place, and that's fine because I love talking about this, discussing the plight of our people. If there was a known pedophile that you knew that was a pedophile in your church, Doc, would you have that pedophile over your choir? If, if I knew of a pedophile in my church, brother, I'm the state star witness. <laughs> He's going to jail, and I'm okay. going to be a witness okay. for the state. No. O okay, all right. So this is what I'm saying, though. The, of course, I, I would be blind to believe that there, any, any, there aren't people in the church struggling with, with inordinate affections and all that. That's dealing. We have people who come to the church who was baptized, who were gay and all that, and still struggle with those temptations. But still, it's not being excused. These things are worked upon, and you're not going to put someone in a position of authority that can harm others knowing they're living that lifestyle. Fighting that lifestyle is one thing, and struggling with that lifestyle is what an elder's position is to help them transition through it. It's not to put them in, a, in an authoritative, comely position to, to, to actually execute their emotions and, and, and their weakness on our congregations. Right? Well, I mean, I wouldn't elder disqualify someone from leadership because they struggle with that issue. I, I mean, this is my personal... Not struggle. Opinion. If they're, I, if they're I, in a relationship I, with another man or another woman, would you have them in position in your church? As of now, I don't have any like that in position at my church. I've never been confronted with it. Okay, good. You know, I've I've never I've never projected to think about it. Okay. You know, as we I mean, we have thirty five hundred people at our church. Good. And I don't know of any who are in an open gay or lesbian relationship. Okay. Now, if if I found that out, what how would I respond? Bro, I've not thought about it. Okay. All right. I've not okay. thought about it yet. All right. Just as long as we understand, because we're not saying, we're not pointing out no individual and saying one sin is worse than the other. And, but you have to be blind not to see what's going on in our churches right now concerning that particular scenario, right? Well, I mean, some churches, not all. I okay. mean, if you came to Mount Carmel Church in Indianapolis, I'm coming. You wouldn't see that. I'm yeah, coming. If you came, you would. Uh -huh. <laughs> I'm coming. All right, all right. Now, on another point, on another point, uh, before we open up the phone calls, I'm going to ask you this because I know others are chopping at the bit to ask you questions. 515-605-9327. Right? In, in the Wisdom of Solomon, the 14th chapter, it talks about a fake visage, someone putting up a fake face instead of our Lord and Savior. Uh, and, the, and the what now? Now, where is this? Uh, the Wisdom of Solomon in the Apocrypha, the 14th chapter, uh, Pastor oh, okay. Theron. Okay. It speaks okay. of okay. a deception on the world where an untimely a, a king would rise with a son and promote this fake face over the earth as God, which is Cedric Bogier and the Pope. It was prophesied in Wisdom of Solomon 14. It says, not only will they put up a fake face, and it will be a, uh, an occasion to deceive the whole world, that with it will come wicked rites and rituals, ceremonies and sacrifices that would lead to sin running rampant throughout the earth. Now, it's one thing to say that the Jews are black and now we're taking ownership of our book, understanding that the people out there aren't protecting it anyway. We're the people that sit upon us to, to protect it and to follow the, the laws within it. 
some might ask you, now that you realize you're an Israelite and, the God, and God gave us holy days, how were you adjusting with knowing that the holy days that were given to us by the Gentiles, like Christmas, Easter, Sunday worship, was and is pagan and has nothing to do with the God of the Bible? How, how is that adjustment going? Well, um, in observation of these these holidays that uh, normally the Christian church celebrates, and I understand that uh, they are pagan, but one of the things that we do for Christmas is not so much celebrate the Christmas season as it is, as it is traditionally celebrated here in America, but we focus on the birth of the Savior. That becomes what's significant for us during that season. We know Jesus was probably not born in the winter. We understand that. Um, but Christmas, as we celebrate it here in America, has been set aside on the calendar, you know, to do whatever it is that they thought Christmas would do. We take it and we sanctify it. Oh. And we use that as an opportunity to teach about the advent of our Lord Jesus Christ. I understand that Easter is a very pagan holiday in origin. Yeah, it very is. Very pagan. And you see some of the paganistic um, symbols and practices with, um, with the Easter egg and the Easter bunny and all of this type of stuff. We, we see some of the vestiges of paganism in that. But we we sanctify that and we celebrate. You say you the sanctify that. Are you, are you saying you cleansing? Oh, yeah. You're cleansing what's wicked and evil. Yeah, and celebrating the essence of it. Oh, the essence. Not so much. Yeah, we celebrate the essence of it. Christ okay. was born. We do celebrate his advent. Okay. Christ was resurrected. We do celebrate his his resurrection. Okay. With regard as Sabbath days and worship days. We, we try to follow the New Testament, man. We, we follow Pauline, um, his writings, and how Paul said things should go. And, 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 and so that's how, we, that's how we do it. Okay. All right. So this is what—and yeah. and you, know what, you know why I brought this around, and we're going to have conversations on the outside of this, is because the whole thing is us finding out that it's a black book was one thing. Now the responsibility of these black chosen people to follow that God that put us under the curse is a whole nother ball of wax now. Because why? We have a lot of our youth that are not just leaving the church because, because you know, the Bible is being stomped upon or atheism is rising. But you have a lot of people that are reading this Bible realizing that, that the churches are actually not following the Bible. That they see the law says one thing, and the pastors are teaching those in the church to do another, and upholding a known lie that they know isn't truth. So eventually they're going to say, either we're going to be all the way with the Most High in His truth, regardless of our color, or we're not. Either If God put us in captivity for breaking His law, isn't, isn't it our responsibility as a children of God to get right what our fathers broke? So, uh, yeah. you, you understand? So, it, it, the color thing is really the entry or the milk of this, Pastor. But overall, we have to put up, okay? We have to put up or step back because it's now the Lord saying, <laughs> you opened up Pandora's box now. You know you're Israel. You know you're in captivity because of your fathers. Your forefathers broke the law. You know that the pagans taught you to be pagan. You know that the Bible doesn't excuse sin. Come back to me all the way and don't celebrate these holidays the Gentiles are using to keep you under oppression. Come back to my high holy days. You can respect anything you want, but you're going to do what I say. Thus saith the Lord God. What say you? Well, I think. Hold on, hold on one second, Elder. Okay. I'll, 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 I
515-605-9327. I think that I don't want to get hung up on what I think is superficial. You know, I, I really okay. do. I I think celebrating days, celebrating holidays, and I, I really do think that that's getting hung up on that is superficial. Okay. I think what's important, what's important is that we bring our people back to a love ethic. True. That we learn how to love God, that we recognize who we are as God's people, and we love our God, and we love each other. Okay. Elder, none of us is going to be perfect. I'm a pastor of a church, and I have made mistakes. I have sinned. You are the elder of a congregation. You've made mistakes. You've sinned. So if sinlessness is what's going to get us out of this predicament that we have fallen into, then we're never going to get out. It's only going to be the grace of God. And I think what's important is for us to recognize who we are as God's people and repent for having strayed away from God. And I what agree. God wants from us more than anything I agree is for that. us to love him and to love each other. That's true. You know, if, if, we, if we can get that, you know, I think we're on our way. That's true. That, that's true, the love part. But, you know, yeah. it, it, you know what? The whole thing is this, right? The Most High has us where he has us. And the journey isn't over. So, you know, I'm not going to, you know, I'm not going to see you any different than a brother who's, who's still, like myself, in transition, transitioning towards the kingdom of heaven. And as we come closer to this, we're going to shed off, you know, some of the teachings that, that you know, that happened in, in, in our servitude and cleave fully to the Lord our God. I, I have full faith in that, mm -hmm. Pastor. I have a brother who would like to mm -hmm. ask you a question. And then after that, we're going to pull up, we're going to pull, open up some phone calls because this is some of the, I love the phone call part. We just have our people randomly here. We on YouTube. And Pastor, guess what? We got 1,500 people right here. 1,540 people okay. listening right now online through YouTube, and uh, they're loving the discussion. And uh, I, I like okay, to th awesome. I, I like to thank you for coming on before we bring in these phone calls. I want to thank you, sir. And, right no. and, and and you know what? I'm behind you. I'm cheering you on through all the way towards the kingdom, 100% for standing against adversity and teaching what you do know as you know as to be you know. Teaching what you know is right and, and, and shepherding our people and giving them the light that we are the children of Israel, okay? And so I don't and, want to take away from that. I appreciate your work, man. I do appreciate yeah. your work. I really do. All praises and, be to uh, the Most High. Your knowledge base is phenomenal, man. And, um, you know, I, I do want to encourage you to, to continue your work. It's really important. Thank you, brother. Hey, hey, hey you doing it too, sir. You understand? And we're going to build together. I'm going to call you on the outside of this. You have my, my word on that. We're going to talk. All right. All right we, have El okay. we have Elder Gabar. He's on. He want to ask you a question. And of course, I got to bring in our weekly, our weekly elder, elder lawyer. And then after that, boom, we're going to open up these phone calls and talk to the world. Guess what? Dr. Theron D. Williams found found out that he was a child of Israel according to the Bible and that the people, that the Bible is a black man's book. He wrote a book about it and he's helping our people through through these perils with giving our children the knowledge of themselves and that must be championed and we must back that. When we see a light turned on in these Christian churches, guess what? We must back them. It's enough ridicule and pointing to what's wrong but guess what? This brother is standing against adversity and teaching our people that we are the children of God. And you know what? That is a great step. Talk to us, Kabar. Okay. Uh, how are we doing, uh, Dr. Williams? Uh, this is hey, a, I'm we doing? doing good, my brother. How are you? Okay, okay. So just, you know, I'm co-hosting today with the, uh, Elder uh, Ricard. Uh, just to kind of introduce myself, uh, you know, I'm, uh, 
I would, you know, the world would probably call me an Afro-Latino, Dominican male. Uh, I'm 47 years old. I've been with this church here for since its conception. But I began to be aware of my Hebrew roots uh, as a Latino man and, and, and indigenous to this side of the world uh, in my early 20s. And um, to kind of give you a background on, on myself, I was hearing you talk with the elder in regards of, you know, what matters, you know, in regards of the holidays and, 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 the, and the Sabbath and things of that nature, and that God is really looking for us to how we treat each other. And, and I, you have no arguments with, 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 with me. And you mentioned the Pauline um, understanding of the scripture. And what I want you to maybe perhaps, and it's, it's more not necessarily uh, a, a question, but more an invitation. You know, I have done a lesson several times uh, titled The Misunderstanding of Paul's Writings. And what I'm asking you for you to maybe to do, to, for you to reconsider, um, to look at the possibility, because you, you mentioned earlier that the hermeneutics that we've been looking at the Bible from the European perspective, and we have to kind of look at the Bible from indigenous Northeast African perspective. And I agree with you. Is it possible too that not only the we have to look at the, the you know the history of the people, we also have to look at the biblical writings of Paul, not from a European perspective or European hermeneutics, but look at Paul as a first century Jew. And if you look at him from a first century Jew perspective, and re because you know, I grew up as a Pentecostal, you know, my father was a Pentecostal minister. My mother still, still is a Christian, you know, woman. She goes to the church every, you know, every Sunday morning. So I, I, I'm familiar with both sides of the understanding. And what I'm, uh, what I'm asking you for you to look at two things: look at the history of the 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 the, uh, the doctrine called replacement theology. I also want you to look at the history of the Pauline doctrine. And basically, when you, and if you like, I should send you some of the material that I have gathered, is that there was a, a, a thought very early on to separate the Gentiles from the Jews. When Christianity began to become popular in Europe, and when, you, when, when Constantine and, and, and those folks began to realize the populator of Christianity, which... For almost 200 years, Christians uh, was uh, more like an African in Egypt and in the Middle East, and they began to kind of catch some things in Europe. They began to manipulate Paul's writings to, get, to give the impression as he was against the law. So I would like to maybe share the opportunity, maybe off scene, for you to maybe take a, a, a relook of Paul's writings, because I... I know you know what most pastors go to Colossians two sixteen. You should relook really at that scripture. You know the uh, Galatians. You should relook really at that scripture. Uh, Romans. You know uh, one two and three. If you could just maybe put yourself in the eye of a first century Jew, in the lingo that he was using, and you understand Hebrew culture, it will open your eyes to a different perspective. And all I'm saying is, uh, uh, you know, it's not necessarily a question, but maybe an invitation for you to say, okay, maybe perhaps that's also part of the deception. Uh, uh, looking at the Paul's writing and separating him from Christ. Because when you look at Christ's mission, what was his mission? I want to end with this. He's a, he was a reformer. He was, in, he was not against the law. He was against the tradition of the elders that were implementing, that would they would be implemented by the Pharisees, and they were putting these, you know, these yokes and these uh, uh, of, of traditions upon the people, and he was liberating the people from that. So I just wanted to maybe, uh, you know, maybe this has to be another part two of this conversation and, and, and things of that nature for you to maybe look at Paul's writing um, from the perspective of a first century Jew, n not from Modern theologian okay. uh, study. So I want to just will you be in, you know well, with, just to with, uh, you know uh, talk to you about that. Go ahead. Well, with regard to Paul, 
it's going to be difficult to understand Pauline writing if you don't understand Paul against the backdrop of his eschatological beliefs. Paul, along with the other New Testament writers, all of the apostles and the early church, really believe that Jesus would return in their lifetime. I mean, they were looking for Jesus like week after next. So Pauline's writing was written against that backdrop. And a lot of the things that Paul wrote about is contextual. Um, He talked about uh, widows and told them that you don't need to remarry. And uh, and that doesn't mean that Paul had something against marriage. Mm-hmm, mm-hmm. But he told these widows, you don't need to get remarried. And the reason he said that is because there was, in his mind, there was too much work to be done with regard to evangelism and winning souls to Christ, because Christ is coming back next month. So you don't want to waste time. And he said to slaves, you know, uh, you know, honor your master and, and, and submit to your master and that type of thing. Not because Paul was, um, he was sanctioning slavery, but what Paul was saying, why put yourself, pit yourself against your master and suffer all of this hell you're going to catch from your master mm-hmm. when Jesus Christ will be back next year? Just hold on. Christ is coming back. So if you understand Paul against his eschatological understanding, then that sheds a different light on how we appreciate Paul. You know, no, um, I, I agree with you. But I'm, what I'm saying is, and you know, I know, you know, I know the Paul doctrine and and what he was teaching could be a, a show in itself. But what I'm saying is, like for instance, and maybe this is a discussion we may have to have behind closed doors, like that scripture about slavery, right? When Paul was saying that servants obey your masters. For my studies, they had to be, you know, from this church, he wasn't talking about slaves and, 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 and masters as we see it. He was referring to the servants of the church obeying the elders of the church. So I just wanted to just, you, you, for you to maybe just consider to open the possibilities, to just hear it out maybe in, in a, another time in, in private quarters that Paul's writings is you know, enormously misunderstood. Okay. You know, and I just want to just, you know, just to maybe open the possibility that we could maybe learn from each other that what Paul was talking about, some, when people are teaching about in that whole slavery situation has nothing to do with slavery. But because the word slave or servant is attached to, especially with African and Latino and the Native Americans of, you know, with that negativity, we attach that. But the you know Greek Conan Greek, which is attached to ancient Hebrew, words in context matter, and, and it could be used in several different you know uh, 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 frames. So I just wanted to just you know maybe we could share this conversation and in, and in, in, uh, in, yeah. in private and, and maybe continue this conversation. I just wanted to just open that possibility for you to be you know maybe to look at that from a different perspective. Yeah, and I wanted to say real quick. For well, brothers and sisters that are out there with our Hebrew and Bible Academy, we'll be going into that this Sunday with uh, the Christianity doctrine, because the whole thing is Christ is the way. And you had the Gentiles coming in trying to run interference to try to misrepresent Paul's teachings as if, as if Paul taught something different. Mm-hmm. All right. No, Christ is the way. See, people try to run to Paul because why? Christ made it clear. I... Think not that I've come to destroy the law or the prophets. I come not to destroy, but to fulfill. Christ died on the cross, not Paul. And Paul never wrote against Christ's teachings. Never. It's just a misconception mm-hmm. how they're, through the modern day theology of replacement theology, to try to replace us like they've always done and say it doesn't matter. But I digress. If you want to be in the Hebrew and Bible Academy and get into this Christianity teaching as far as the true Christianity, what it was before Constantine came on the scene. Send an email to one at AOL.com because I believe that's the ministry Christ said must be taught throughout the four corners of the earth, then the end shall come. Not the heathenistic Roman Catholic deception that have co-ops and destroyed churches throughout the earth, 
that's everywhere, but yet Christ haven't returned because that's not the gospel. But guess what? Based on this book and based on the awakening of our people all over the earth, that gospel will soon finish what Christ started throughout the earth. That the children of Israel are scattered throughout the earth and the awakening is here. What book? I'm talking about first and foremost, the King James Version Bible. 515-605-9327. If you want to be a part of this academy and figure out, we're going to go into Paul's writings this weekend and, and break down the misconception of Paul. That will be the narrative for this Sunday, okay? Now, send an email to gatheringasone at AOL.com. Gatheringasone at AOL.com. Or go to historytimes.org or gatheringofchrist.org and become a part of this academy. We open up the book. We throw out philosophy. We just break down the book and give it to you raw like it was intended outside of philosophy. We have Dr. Theron D. Williams, the author of the book, and we have the book in front of you. And you can support the brother's book, of course. The book here. One moment. Let me make sure everyone see it. The Bible is black history. OK, it's just a tool. It's a tool he used to help our brothers understand it. It's a lie out there. Uh, uh, people touting that the Bible is a white man's book. Just the idea of that is ludicrous. And uh, you can support his book. The Bible is black history. And guess what? It is Christ. It tell you in Revelations, the first chapter, Christ is a black man like Bernice Brass. And guess what? He have a white woolly bush, white hair. And Daniel 7 and 9 tells us God is on the throne, a black man with a white bush. OK, a black man. And guess what? Adam was made in his image. And like Dr. Therwan D. Williams stated, the Bible is black history. Come on in. We're going to open up these calls. And then uh, I hope you're ready to answer some questions, doctor. And we're going to try to be respectful of the time. So make sure you limit your, your questions or comments to one minute per caller. We're going to try to make sure we're not giving dissertations here, okay? We're going to start off with Stacy, who has a question in 318 area code. Then right after that, we have Travis with a comment. I hope it's a short one and a question. Let's go. Stacy. This is she. Blessings, Stacey. You lie with the Gathering of Christ Church and Dr. Theron D. Williams. Time's yours. Okay. I just, I, I, <laughs> I just want to, um, what he spoke on in reference to Hebrew, um, I used to just figure that Hebrew was just the language. But from what he is saying, that it's actually a nation? No, Hebrew is a language. Yeah, it's a language. Okay, so yeah. it is a language. Right? It is a language. Uh, yeah, um, Esau, he spoke Hebrew. Mm -hmm. That's a different race. Yeah. Uh, you had many, you had the Midianites. Okay. They spoke Hebrew. Mm -hmm. All, many okay. children of Abraham. Abraham, Abraham had many children speaking More Hebrew. Yep. But, the, but the bloodline, in particular, what he was saying was the bloodline that comes through Israel is what he was saying in particular. That's a race. Okay. Yeah. All right? Okay. 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 Well, question. Okay. Okay. All right. Thank, for your, uh, thank you. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you. Shalom. Okay. Yeah. We just You're talking. Right. We cleared it up. It's fine. Um, we have trapped. Yeah, I mean, because it's a because it's a language, it doesn't mean it's not a race. I mean, you can speak Japanese and be Japan. It doesn't mm -hmm. mean that you're not Japanese. Yeah. 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 You know. I yeah. Mean, you can be Chinese and you can be from China, a yeah. Chinese, and speak Chinese. Mm -hmm. yeah, One but, doesn't exclude the other. Yeah, but the point that, that I think she was bringing out is that uh, the word Eber or Hebrew is the language that crossed over to, through the bloodline. And usually when most people hear Hebrews today, they say, okay, they're, they're the Jews, they're the Israelites. Yeah. So just, mm -hmm. just making sure, you know, we, we understand it from a what you would call scholarly level. Uh, Travis, with a comment, we're going we're gonna to go through these questions. We only got four minutes for you to get in. 515-605-9327. We're going to go as long as we can. The broadcast will be officially over in four minutes, but we're going to see if we can keep the doctor on just to answer some of these questions in overtime. So if you're not in within the next four minutes, sorry, you're going to have to call back next week and, and, and have your voice heard. 
Okay, Travis, you're live with the Gathering of Christ Church. Hey, hey Shalom. I got a quick question, Bob, for the doctor. Um, what, doctor, what's been your um, experience dealing with your, like other Christian leaders, other Christian black leaders in the churches regarding truth, and getting away from that feel-good, you know, philosophy um, that you know sounds good, but obviously when you leave church within an hour, you forget it. So, what's been your experience with uh, any colleagues you have in the church, the black church? Well, uh, like I was telling the elder. Um, that I've had good success so far. You know, I've been on the road constantly for about a year. And, um, brother, you're talking about the feel-good stuff. This is feel-good stuff when you are standing there teaching and helping people to understand that uh, we are a we are the authors um, of, of salvation history and we are the actors in salvation history is something that, we invented through the power of God. God used us to bring salvation history into this world. I mean, you can't get a better feeling than that. And so um, it has been my experience as I have done this, particularly in African-American churches. Uh, I told the elder earlier that um, it seems like we are doing this at the right time because people are hungry for it and they want it. And so I haven't had not much, if any, pushback against it. I've had questions, and it's okay to be questions because that's 90 seconds. Back. Oh, don't worry that about that. It's just it's back and sharpen it's ticking my down. Skills. Yeah. yeah, it's so, ticking down. So, yeah, so, okay. so, yeah, that's, that, yeah. yeah. Well, doc, let me, let me, Excuse me, doctor. He also had a comment. Let me, let me clarify. You had a comment. Do your no, comment no, no, so no, we can no, go no. to the next call because no, we have Elder Gajo on the line. Just, just the, the, the T.D. Jake style type preaching. That, that's, that's, that's what I mean. That feel good. That's not biblical. It just sounds good, but philosophy. 60 seconds. That, that's what I mean. That, that's it. Shalom, elder. Shalom, my All right, brother. shalom. Bless you, my brother. Great points. Mm -hmm. And yeah, we have to, yeah, I wonder why there's not enough, there, there's, not a, there's not enough united voices in the Christian church publicly denouncing the prosperity movement and guys like T.D. Jakes. I'm talking about from a united front, but that's a conversation within itself. Let's bring in Elder Gaja real quick. Elder Gaja, you on the line. Talk to us. You on the line with, with Dr. Hey. Theron D. Williams. Hey, shalom, doctor. Shalom, elders. Blessings. How you doing? Bless shalom. you. Bless shalom. you. Shalom. shalom. Great. Blessed by the best. And his name is Ahaya. Talk to us. <laughs> Hey, I'm, I'm, I'm just, I'm listening to the broadcast and, um, you know, I, I came in a bit late. But Ten seconds. The, the, the gist of the conversation here and, um, you know, blessings to the, to, the, to the doctor man doing the work, you know, waking up the people, letting them know who they are. Because, you know, as, as, as we all can see, you know, even the blind can see it right now that, that the most I, the most I is waking up his people all over. Um, you know, I, I just found out last night, believe it or not, that there's a sister within the church here in Jamaica who comes to church on a Sabbath and is going to her Sunday church and trying to drop and sow the seeds in a, in a Sunday church. I had no idea that was going on until last night. So every, <laughs> people, people waking up, you understand? People, you know, people, people, people coming, coming to the knowledge. And, 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 and it's like, you know, you know, when you look at it, say, 10 years ago, 9 years ago, when I came into the truth, as, as to how it is now, you know, it's no longer the question of is are, are, is, are we the people? The, the, the question is now is okay then, what are we gonna do now as the people? How are we gonna how are we gonna bring this home and finish and, and, and finish as as you know as the Bible says? And you know that that's really that's really the the, 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 the main point right now. How are we gonna finish this in, in unity, in love? In the spirit and in the spirit of Christ, how how are we going to come together right now and have more discussions like these with uh, with, with, with um, our brethren who are waking up out of the Christian church? You understand me? How are we gonna how are we gonna bring this together now as a nation as, as a nation of people? Because everybody can see it. The, the the political system is a failure. The church is a failure. The you know your your schools, universities are failure. You with me? It's only the, the only resolve that we have right now is coming back to the most high. You with me? And, you know, there's an, there's, an, there's an impending war on the horizon right now. And 
a war aimed at this. I'm looking at a thing called, um, someone sent me a message. Um, let me see if I can find it here. Where is it? Let me see if I can find it here. Um, you know, uh, uh, the, the Operation Iron Fist, you know, targeting targeting um, groups that identify with, 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 a, with a black identity. You with me sooner or later right now, we're going to be labeled as terrorists. We're going to be counted amongst the transgressors right now. You with me? But it's true because they can stop it. It's coming. You with me? So what are we going to do right now? And, you know, what, as, you know and, and I'm just posing this question to the pastor. Pastor, what are we going to do right now, <laughs> you know, as, as, a, as a nation of people coming back to, to the most high? If, you know, if, you could, you know, if there's any, any, any suggestions that you have or any plans that you have right now, because there's a, there's a destruction coming aiming at the children of Israel. And we're going to the book of um, the Second Ezra in the Apocrypha. We, it, it's evident. You with me? And it tells you, it tells you the only refuge that we're going to have is, is those who keep the laws of the Most High through Christ. So, you know, the, you know, the, 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 this is where this is just a conversation I, I believe that is needed is needed is needed to be had because um, knowing that we are Israel, like you said earlier before, Christ is the way. Knowing knowing that Israel is just a part of the puzzle, what are we going to do right now in Christ? How are we going to build back the nation in Christ? You understand? And, you know, like the Bible says, the kingdom come not by observation. And, you know, <laughs> that's my two pins. Th thank you, Alden. I'm, def I'm definitely going to call you after the broadcast. Great points. All right. Would you like to answer to anything you've just said, uh, Pastor, uh, Dr. Theron? Well, well, I mean, he, he uh, the, basically what I got from his question is, since we know this, what are we going to do about it? Yeah. You know? And one of the things about the Bible is Black History Institute is, is linking up with uh, the gathering of Christ Church and others who have recognized, coming to the knowledge of who they are in God, who they are in Christ, and that this book is about the history of our people. And I believe it's galvanizing, coming together as one body, recognizing that, you know, and coming together on the basis of our shared beliefs, coming together on the basis of our love and our respect for one another and our corporate worship for one God, acknowledging that Jesus Christ is the Messiah. You know, if we can come together along those lines, I mean, it is, it is unimaginable what God can do through his people. Yeah, and I'm glad you're saying this, Doctor, because I see some people in the comment, and I understand what they're saying, okay? They, they can hear clearly where there may be a disagreement in doctrine or whatever the case is. But I need y'all to check this out, brothers and sisters. Even Paul says when he was a child, he thought as a child. But when he, he came of age, he put away childish things and childish thinking. Christ died for our nation. He died for sinners. He died for those whether they agreed or disagreed. He died. And we have to be at a point where once you come of age and understand the spirit of Christ and really cleave to that, you tend to link into that spirit and, and, and try to work with someone, your own brother or sister, starting first where we agree. Instead of the adverse drawing swords and not getting to that point of being able to help each other, knowing that each of us are part of the body and has an intricate part that will help us get, to get from point A to point B. And I'm not going to have one doctrinal misunderstanding keep me from building an understanding with my family. We don't, th That's right. we don't throw our children out and our uncle out. We know our uncles and cousins and aunts are doing all types of stuff. We don't just throw them out because they're wrong, because they're family. We have to extend and this. They, yeah, yeah, and, Pastor, we have to extend and, this spirit. And, 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 and they don't throw us out when we're wrong. Exactly. So the whole deal is, yeah. when I was young, I used to walk down the street with a, with a Mitri, like, in a Bible like a sword, waiting on a pastor waiting on someone. But you know what? Even though I knew the Bible and was breaking down scriptures, we the Hebrews and all that, it was no Hebrew Israelites in my community feeding our people like the pastors, mm -hmm. setting up institutions like the pastors, having food drives like the pastor. So even though we had the word and was following the law, where was the fruit? 
So what I'm saying is, brothers and sisters, the most high want us to put our, our childish thinking aside and take the wealth, the spirit, the knowledge that our people have who do know how to deal with institutions, who do know how to work with people, who have a love for our people. And guess what? We can utilize their part and they'll utilize ours. No longer am I looking for where we are, where, where we are at variance at when Christ died for all of us. It's time for us to come together, folks. Just like I read his book, and guess what? We have his book. Do I agree with everything in his book? Of course not, but check this out. If I wrote a book when I, when I first got the knowledge based on what I had at that time, I would look back at it and say, well, okay, I learned this. Let me revise this and do another volume because obviously I'm not finished learning. I'm still living. So we have to be patient. With patience, possess ye your soul, folks. We have to stop looking for reasons to, to shut the door on each other due to disagreement. Don't you know that's part of our curse? That a nation divided against itself cannot stand? I believe this pastor is serving the same God I'm serving. I went to Christian church. I was raised on a Sunday. I was all that, but the most high have taken me to a different point where I am in my life. It, and it's not to negate where he is, but the most high have him where he is for a purpose. Folks, I just wanted to say that real quick. I'm, I'm sorry, Pastor. Uh, you know, let, let, let me go down oh, the line. No, no, that's okay, Elder. All right, well, okay. Well, I, well Elder, I, I, I appreciate your show. I appreciate you having me on, but I do have to run. I've okay. got some of the stuff to do before I shut it down for the night, man. Well, and Pastor. I, I, do, I do want to encourage you to keep, keep up the great work, man. It's your blessing to the body of Christ. Thank you, my brother. And, and I, I hope to sit down and break bread with you soon. All right? All righty, man. That sounds good. <laughs> All right. Bless you. Bless there you, there go Elder. Dr. Theron D. Williams. And guess what? He's, he's gone for the night, but we're going to continue our phone call. You can just hang up, sir, and I'm going to call you tomorrow, and I'll reach out to you. All right. <laughs> there you go. Dr. Theron D. Williams. Let's go down the line and have these phone calls. Uh, before I do that, of course, I have to bring in our residential elder who's on standby. Elder lawyer, where you at, young man? I didn't forget about you. How you doing? I'm blessed by the best. And his name is Ahaya. Talk to me, young man. What do you think about the conversation well, this evening? Well, uh, uh, it looks like Elder Gabbar turned to Elder Lawyer. Right, right. Oh, 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 yeah. Let me, got my, let me move okay. you over. Like, ah. Oh, I'm sorry. I'm sorry. Like, <laughs> Man, I'm all like, he got. He have light skin arms, but he, it looked like Lawyer. He, he was like, uh, there's a magic <laughs> trick. He just came out of nowhere. I'm like, yo. <laughs> the same blue shirt. Oh, uh, no. Where's Gabbar went? He was a literal, uh, Gabbar was a literal, a literal cake unturned. <laughs> he, he, had, he had Lawyer's head. <laughs> In Gabar's body. Talk to me, That's Lord. <laughs> yes, sir. Yes, sir. I, I think that last portion uh, of dialogue that you just brought up, um, as it pertains to some of the comments, yeah. Um, I think that really you you took the, the the words right out of my mind, right out of my mouth, and uh, you put things in perspective for a lot of brothers and sisters. Yeah. And, um, one thing I wanted to mention on that is that. There is no person that we are going to speak to that's going to agree 100% with everything that we bring forward. Yeah. As you mentioned, nonetheless, we still have to know how to deal and interact with these people because they have a piece to the puzzle. They have whether, you know, connections, whatever the case may be, they have avenues, whatever, you know, whatever it may be, that's beneficial to our people. Yeah. Every, we're not... Everyone may not be as open to receive uh, the information as we bring it forward. To some people, we may seem as, as, um, as loving as we are, as respectful as we are. Some people may view how we bring the truth as extreme. Yeah. So you may have another person who may bring it in another fashion that they may be used to, again, may not agree 100% with what we bring forward but they bring things in a fashion that a certain demographic can agree to. And eventually it's up to the most high to bring forth uh, the elect and to actually, you know, bring forth those who he deems to be his remnant, his, you know, those who will be his chosen in the end. 
it's not necessarily that, okay, you're following this doctrine at this point does not mean that you will be there at the end and vice versa, because someone else follows another doctrine does not necessarily mean that they won't be there at the end, standing before Christ receiving the crown. This is the scaling down process that we're going through. But nonetheless, I think overall it was a, you know, a very good conversation. I think, you know, we, we, we have opened up an opportunity to where we can actually dialogue with the brother and bring certain points and bring certain information that at this point still may be disagreement, but respectfully, you know, we can sit down, have certain dialogues to bring certain things together. And then also, you know, use the different avenues and the different connections, so on and so forth, to get in a certain places to bring forth the truth. Exactly. Based on what we, based on what we know, you understand what I'm saying? So it doesn't have to be, um, necessarily a negative thing that we don't agree on everything. So that's, mm-hmm. that's just what I wanted to bring out on the conversation, but nonetheless, a, a very, very good dialogue. Yeah, absolutely, uh, Elder. Yeah, and, and what I'm starting to realize is that I think this is the second pastor that I have seen, maybe the third, that has uh, br- brung out either a book or a documentary or uh, an understanding that, that the people of color in America are the, the Hebrews, Israelites. Mm-hmm. But what I'm starting to realize is, is that deep-rooted, fundamental doctrine oh, yeah. of the misunderstanding of Paul's writing. Man, it's powerful. It's, that, it, it's, uh, it's man, let me underestimating tell you. Let me that tell you, thing. That's more powerful and deeply rooted than the white image. They can mm-hmm. put down the white image. Mm-hmm. But to put down the doctrine that came with it, mm. that's, that's the real that, battle. That's a big but I'm going to say this, yeah. though. On the other hand is you have to tip your hat or at least give credit to a pastor in this day and time who would say, well, listen, I was against something, but at least I did some research. Yeah. And one thing about him, he's a learned man. Yeah. He's a humble man. You understand? And, you know, one thing about him, I, he's not a proud man. You yeah. notice how he says, I made mistakes, too. I'm not going to say that I've been all I've been coming up roses all my life. Yeah. So we have to realize that this man have a lot of attributes that he learned by reading and walking this life and following Christ. Yeah. And, and no, no one can deny that. And so the whole thing is I must at least give him credit for saying, you know what, because so many pastors t- turn up their nose. I've been out speaking to the pastor, which is walk away and don't care and think he has it all and don't even didn't even. Don't even think to research and say, maybe I'm wrong. Maybe there's something incorrect that I can change. So let me tell you, because I believe the same spirit that led him to point A to where he is in this conversation tonight will lead him further. Because Mm -hmm. don't forget, even though I'm conversating, I I dropped a few things in between there. So at least, hey, once it's dropped out there, you can't put it back. You can't Mm -hmm. pull it back. Yeah, because I made sure I put out there. I'm like, well, the holy days are there, and you okay? So you said that okay, you sanctifying what's what's against the Bible or whatever. So you know, I'm, I'm sure that's yeah. <laughs> I'm that, sure that, 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 this, I'm sure that's gonna it's yeah. gonna drive him in a different direction. Mm-hmm. The same way he found out that the Bible is a black man's book, he's gonna look at Paul's writings mm-hmm. again, like you said, mm-hmm. because that's what type of guy he is. Mm-hmm. He don't want. To be the one on the wrong end of things, yeah. Because you know he ever decided to teach his flock correctly, yeah. I can tell that, yeah. So he's going to look at those holy days again, even if he didn't say anything out, uh, outwardly, yeah. He's going to look at those again, yeah. He did it before, <laughs> and it led to a book and what a phone conversation with the gathering of Christ Church. Let's go down the line. <laughs> hey, gosh, I'm going to mention one more thing. Okay, okay, go ahead, Lloyd. Yeah. Yes, sir. I'm going to mention one more thing. Let's yeah. say hypothetically he, he stays where he is in his journey. Yeah. Based on this book that he's written, someone is going to pick up that book, read that information, yeah. and eventually they're going to take it, you know, their journey to the next step. So it still, it still may bear fruit, even if he decides to stay where he is. You still have to look at the fruit that it may bear in the future based on those who will come across this book, had no idea who they were came to the knowledge of who they were, but still sought further and decided that, you know what, maybe the holy days are more important than what we once believed. 
Yeah. Maybe there's other points to the doctrine that are more important than what we once believed. Exactly. Let me take my journey further based on the information that at least I received from this book. Exactly. And you know what, uh, Lloyd, I'm going to keep you in with us. I'm going to keep Gaja with us. And you know what's good about this? This conversation we're having? Mm -hmm. The fact that we're having it. Yeah. Israelites are talking to each other. Mm -hmm. Israelites are waking, are, are, are waking up. And now... Those walls that was there due to, due to doctrinal differences, they're, they're crumbling. They're coming down. This mm -hmm. is what the world feared. And eventually Esau is going to implode the whole thing. Mm -hmm. Okay, it's over. <laughs> they're, they're talking to each other. The Their up. God is listening. Yeah. They're gathering together. Mm -hmm. Let's pull the plug on this thing. Yeah. <laughs> right? Yeah. Because this is what they want. They wanted us not to conversate with each, with each other strictly off of doctrinal differences. Yeah. And like I said, he knows he's an Israelite. He believes in Christ. Guess what? That's my brother. Mm -hmm. he, he has a lot of other things he has to get together doctrinal-wise, but there's some stuff that we got to get together too. Mm -hmm. And so the whole, the whole thing is, is the fact that the conversation has been had. Okay? You have a lot of people who know they're Israelites and deny Christ. Mm -hmm. follow the Sabbath, follow the holy days and all that, but yet they deny Christ. Well, guess what? You might as well, you, you might as well go eat a pork chop sandwich. Mm -hmm. Okay. <laughs> you might as well go eat a pork chop sandwich, dig a hole into hell and wait because that's where you're going. Okay. So folks, the whole thing is this, and I'm putting it out there. Christ is the way. He's the truth. He's the light. You understand? And every opportunity this church has to have th these types of conversations, we'll do it in respect of our guests. Mm -hmm. Regardless of what his doctrine is and what he believes different than us, when we pull in a brother or sister in here, they're our guests. And we're going to treat them as such. Come on, let's go down the line. 747, 757 area code. Let's go. All right, 757 area code. Shalom. 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 Talk to us. Shalom, Elder. Yeah. Shalom, Shalom, brother. Yeah, I just wanted to jump in really quick. Uh, I, overall, I just want to comment, man. What a blessed evening. You know, man, look <laughs> at the most high and, 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 and his work, man. It's, it's, it's unbelievable, man. I've, I've only been in the truth for about to be three years soon, but I've lis listened to and watched over 150 videos had to be. And <laughs> I'm telling you, it's, it's amazing. Praise the most It's time. amazing, Elder, how your job, well, you know, for Christ's sake, bless you for doing Christ's job, but your job that you're doing in service to him is getting easier and easier, brother. And I'm, I've been praying for that for you. You've been battling, brother. And, and I'm just grateful to see that, you know, all the work and effort that all you elders been putting in you know, it's really, you know, coming to fruition. And I, I, I know it has to be a good feeling for you because it's a good feeling for me because, man, to see people constantly battling with you and constantly just rejecting the word of God and it's right there, for you to just be the man you are and, st and stick with it, man, for Christ's sake, just big ups to you, Elder, man. We love you. We thank you. Bless you, Pastor Williams, man. You know, just continue in your work, brother. And we're going to all get there one day, man. That's all I got. Shalom. And thank you. Praise the Most High. And you know what? Hey, the Most High is not only just working with me. He's working with the truth. He's working with you, brother. And guess what? He's working with these elders. Mm -hmm. Because usually when, when God just come in, God just come in, it, it, he just trying to spill guts and blood all over the place. He just cut <laughs> his stuff squirting all over the place. And I'm sitting there with, I'm trying to sew it back up. And he's, no, Elder. And they, they, they trying to come with swords. You know, I'm trying to tap Elder Gabar because Elder Gabar about to go into the Pauline thing. And I'm like, no, let's leave this for the academy. It's right. a, you know, like they say, Rome wasn't built, well, Jerusalem wasn't built in a day. Let me day. put that, put it that way. Yeah. Heck with Rome. Rome. Jerusalem wasn't built in a day. So, you know, I'm going to tell you, a lot of these elders, a lot of our brothers and sisters are becoming our elders, and you have become more patient with our people. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. I mean, you know, so mm -hmm. I thank the most high. And, hey, brother, hey, a lot of you are doing great things, I know. And, it, 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 hey, it's your turn. It's your turn to stand 
and the patience. And we have to show as an, an, an example as elders so that y'all can step in and finish. That's what this work is about. Right. And, and that's why, you know, yeah. I want to kind of open the door of yeah. like, let's have a conversation after the fact because I didn't want it to become a yeah. debate. But exactly. I just want him to just open the, the possibility that the trickery of us being Israel was yeah. there also a conspiracy, an agenda. And the doctrine, uh, trying of to doctrine play as well. Paul against Christ. Yeah, was so that, that also part of the plan? So they can still come up with the same conclusion. Exactly. Still minimizing who we are yeah. and upping the Gentiles, right? right? Exactly. Right. Because, I know where you're going. Yeah, I know where because, you're going. Because <laughs> it, 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 it's like this. I think I the, the way they, they're going, it's like, okay, we got to get them on both sides. Okay. Yeah. If we can't stop them finding out who they are, Okay, let's try to get the doctrine. The doctrine wise. Okay, we can't get it this way. Let's get it another way. Let's exactly. Get it. It's, just, it's just layers and layers and exactly. layers that, that we have to start looking at in regards. So, so how do we overcome it? Mm. We discuss it in spite of our differences. Yeah. That's what they didn't expect. That's they, what, exactly. they wanted that doctrinal wall to stop us from ever having this conversation. Yeah. Yeah. And even when uh soon as don't forget, no soon as we had we had that discussion on this book a few weeks ago, mm. everyone and their mama, like Jess yeah. Lee Peterson said, <laughs> went and brought the book. And I had AC, uh, aunt from Virginia, his mm. father, they vetted the book. And they mm. was calling me, Elder, do you know what's in the book? Mm. And he started going through some things. And I'm like, well, listen, I'm not saying that the brother, you know, wrote a Bible. Mm -hmm. You know, of course, there's some doctrinal differences there. He, that's not the Bible there. But mm. we have to give him credit for, for what he's done so far. Yeah. And we have to make sure that Listen, understand that there may be some doctrinal differences in the book. Yeah. But you must take you must take all the good out and spit yeah. out the bones. Yeah, even even the yeah. brother that wrote uh from Babylon to Kim Up Two. Yeah. Uh he he you know, we had him on the show the show years ago. Yeah, Rudolph R. He, Windsor. Yeah, yeah, he had different editions yeah. of his books because he realized for the years he was more not uh, you know, and, came across more information so he and he had to change volumes. different yeah, exactly. you know, the, the, the old volume to the new exactly. volume. Yeah. So, so exactly. that happens all the time. And you know what? Yeah. I was about to write a book in 2009. Mm. Similar to him is my experience in the truth, mm. doctrinal understandings, how to break down things and end up becoming the Hebrew and Bible Academy mm. really with the lessons instead of me telling the journey and and the doctrinal deceptions that are out there and putting it in a book, it became right. the Hebrew and Bible Academy. Mm, that's but, profound. Yeah, but the whole thing is, I'm glad mm. that I didn't put it in a book and let the Bible be the book and me teach the right. Hebrew and Bible Academy. Right. Because as I grow and the doctrine becomes more clearer and things I didn't know before, I don't have to go back and say, well, we in this volume... This I was. This is where I were t was ten years ago, and and was incorrect. Yeah. Let me make another book to correct it. Yeah. I'm glad I didn't do it. Yeah. Because I believe the Bible stands on its own, and we just have to make sure we teach the the correct doctrine yeah. out of it. Not yeah. to say that those books aren't tools. They are. Yeah. I mean, I I used the I used from Babylon to Tim book two, lawyer and I and all of us. In our classes, like in the academy, all the time, yeah. taking excerpts from it. The man was a is a genius and was a genius for his time. Yeah, uh, writing a book against the power. Yeah, uplifting our people. We use his reference out of the, even though we know. And make it clear, the Europeans are not Jaffa. Let me put that at straight out right now. Mm -hmm. They would like you to believe they're anyone but Esau. Yeah, I'm going to put that out there. And I'm not going to say that because this is what I think or imagine. I've researched it. Yeah. We did a study two weeks ago, Who's Edom? And guess what? It links directly to Queen of England. It links, believe it or not, to Barack Obama too. He's connected to the Edomites on his mother's side. It links to George Bush. It, li it links to the, yeah. it links to the, the Wetton family who took on the names Mm. of the British monarchy and the Wetton family was from Germany mm -hmm. and their bloodline is linked to Odin what they say the legend of Odin but when you look at the edge the legend of Odin it's just believe it or not it's just a, a flamboyant story or a fascinated story mm -hmm. of Edom mm -hmm. when he when they claim he died and graduated into what you would call God, the God's pantheon. 
They said that after Edom died, he became Odin. Well, the bloodline goes straight to the British family of England till this day. So we don't have to fi figure out whether or not they're Japheth. The original Japhetic people were Asian. Mm -hmm. Just because they were in Europe and the original sons of Ham, Japheth was, had the landmass of what we call Asia Minor, that doesn't mean that the Europeans who conquered Asia Minor are Japhetic people. Yeah. All right. I wanted to put that out there. I'm yeah. clearing that up. If you get the book, he may say Jaffa, but he just haven't researched that part yet. And that's okay. Yeah, that's okay. Okay. At least yeah. he know that the black people in America are the real Jews, and that's a, a great start. Amen. Amen. All right. Let's go. Let's go real quick. Let's go down the line. Only a few more because we have to run. Um, no, no, the next Ahaba one. with a comment. No, no, I think that's the next. Yeah, yeah, okay, that's it. Yep, that's okay, it. and then that's I'm going to bring in Ramar. I'm sure Ramar <laughs> wants to say, say something here. Talk to us. You're live, sister. You're Shalom. live. Shalom. How are you doing, Abba? I'm well, I'm well. Um, I just listened, and it was a joy to be able to hear this lesson that more people are waking up. Yeah. Um, what stood out to me that he mentioned um, was about holidays. I'm, I heard you guys ask him about it. Yeah. And he couldn't really give a direct answer. But he did say love them. And so what, I, what came to mind for me was how long it takes for people to be able to grasp that even once they become conscious um, of who they are. So something I managed to find works for me when speaking with people about holidays and being able to let them go is love. He mentioned love. But um, the thing is, is I'll ask them, well, when you love someone, if someone loves you, what are your expectations of them to show you that they love you? That's mm -hmm. usually how I ask them. And then from there, they, it's easier for them to get it. So that was one of the big things that stood yeah. out when he spoke. And I know it takes a minute for people to get there. I'm just glad to have listened and um, be able to be a part of this awakening and hear more and more people coming into the understanding of who they are every day. It's beautiful. Mm -hmm. Very beautiful. Well, mm -hmm. thank you, sister. And th those are some great points you just brought forth from a place you want to hold, okay? Thank you, sister, for your comment. Hi. Right. I believe that, uh, guess what? This is, I take the good pieces, right, and understand that, hey, if, if, you, if you miss some of what he said, then you're missing it. Because before he said anything, he said what? When I asked him the question of the holy days, mm -hmm. his response was, I know they're pagan. <laughs> yeah, that, that was a kind of story. Right yeah. there, boom. That's all he had to put out there. That he know they were pagan. That's it. Mm -hmm. Because now, not whether or not it's right or wrong, it's how those who hear it takes that information and what they do with it. Mm -hmm. Hold up, pastor. You said you knew they were pagan. But you didn't. When are you going to teach us that? Now, I'm not going to be there for that conversation. Right? <laughs> he will. <laughs> Mm -hmm. right. <laughs> you understand? Yeah. So the whole thing is the fact that it's on record where someone would say, well, I know something is not of God, but we do it anyway. Mm -hmm. Okay. Yeah. That, I, I, that came out. I didn't make them say that. It's out there. Hey. But, you know, baby steps. But baby it's steps. baby steps. But the whole thing mm -hmm. is that I didn't need a debate. Mm -hmm. He already said before he said that, before he came back, mm -hmm. And said that, you know, not he didn't use the word grace, but he says it in a way in which, you know what I mean, he what he, what word he used to say he he do something with it. Uh, uh, he sanctified it. He's cleanse it. He cleanses it. He yeah, cleanses cleanse it. it. Before he cleanses it, he admitted that it was pagan. pagan. So the question is, what authority the God gave man to cleanse it? When something? did God say that you can cleanse you know the woe to them that uh, call evil good and evil you, and good evil? You know, what can you make so, straight with the most high's crooked? How crooked. can you make straight with the most high made crooked? Yeah. So really, I didn't have to do anything. When someone admit what they're dealing with is wrong, but they're doing it anyway, hey, what can I say? What debate? There's no debate. Mm -hmm. That's it. Mm -hmm. Someone is going to look at that and say, well, hold up, pastor. I know yeah. the Jews are black, but we're going to have to talk about this too. Yeah, right? and, and, and what I noticed is that yeah. they, most people, there are... Comp they're betting or they're they're are putting the second commandment against yeah. the first commandment. In other words, every single time we talk about Sabbath and feast days that God has ordained, yeah. they always jump into 
feeding the homeless, yeah. loving, walking the old lady across of the street, course. which is all thing yeah. is important. I'm not saying that, it's a perfect know, way of of of, of as getting if, off as the if yeah. This man who I'm feeding is more important than God Almighty. What, so it's what, like I don't have to keep the Sabbath because I just gave this guy a sandwich. Well, like and I said, and that's what's important. Like I'm saying, if I'm getting up out of somewhere, you have yeah. to strike up some dust first. Yeah. <laughs> and when the dust settles, I'm out of there. I mean, exactly. So the love is the dust. Right. It's like okay, hold up, hold up. We're not celebrating Easter. We're celebrating Passover. The cloud of love comes up. Right. And mm -hmm. when the dust settles, we're already talking about right. the Africans mm -hmm. <laughs> or yeah. whatever. So yeah. it, I, you, want, you know what it yeah, is. But it, but it's, it's a common it thing is, with, it, with modern yes. Christendom. Listen, they always throw in the hey, love and you ma how you're hey, supposed to treat your Maddie to disregard God's command. Let me tell you, it's the, great, yeah. it's the greatest it's gate yeah. hatch yeah. known to man because yeah. who can disagree with love, okay? Mm -hmm. It's like... It's like, listen, <laughs> you can disagree with that. Yeah. Well, what's more important is love. Right. Okay. But anyway, yeah. <laughs> let's go down the line. Only a few more. We have Yakan with a comment and Anthony with a comment. Shalom. Shalom. How you doing? I'm Shalom. blessed by the best. Ahaya yeah. is his name. <laughs> That's awesome. Hey, I want to say I really enjoy what the pastor was saying with the historical context in regards to what the church has contributed. Exactly. And you can't discredit him for that at no. all. You know, that's some legitimate stuff there. Now, like you guys said, he doesn't have the full truth, but it takes time. I was I was introduced to this stuff when I was 18. <laughs> I'm 36 years old. Mm, it was a the progression. Yeah. You know, it takes time. But at the end of the day, he has the core. He has the, the common denominator, which is Christ. Exactly. And with that, that it will come. I truly believe it's going to come for him and for many, for many more, because the the Hebrew nation, I believe that we need the Christian church in the sense of we need their love. We They, they need us. We need yeah. each other. It's yeah. not a... It can't be just a one-sided thing. Mm -hmm. And so I think in, in due time that the Most High is going to bring us together, and we will become one because we're all one nation. Yeah. So uh, I really enjoyed him. I enjoy his book. And like you said, he doesn't have everything accurate, and we know that. We have our truth, and we know our truth. Yeah. But I think that the fact that he's open to hear what we have to yeah. explain to him and what we know is awesome in itself. So, yeah, brother. Yeah, yeah, go ahead. Hey, as a matter of fact, I don't want to send you that book. I hope you liked it. You know? Yeah, you sent it. <laughs> man, thank you, brother. I got it. And I'm going to tell you, not, his story is interesting nonetheless. And I'll tell you, the Most High delivered light to him. And it was to the degree in which yeah. he had to share. Mm -hmm. When you look at his experience from a, Catholic, I mean, from a Christian background, you can't help, you can't ignore Christ's hand in this man's awakening. Mm -hmm. I'm, I'm straight yeah. out, straight out, mm -hmm. straight out. And, and hey, yeah. who could be against that? Yeah, because I, I, I truly believe that the battle yeah. is going to be won um, when the, the, the mainline Christian community start having these discussions. Because when, oh, they you know, have it. They have they, they're discussion. having the discussion. And, you know, the brothers there are from the different camps, the Israelite camps and things of that nature and so forth and so on. Yeah. When you look at them and they've been doing the work and they, they, they I'm not denying their work either. But when you look at when you, uh, average Joe walks down the street in, in, in an average ghetto or urban uh, city, yeah. You pass three churches, five churches, seven, yeah. ten churches before yeah. you see one Israelite church. Yeah. So the battle needs to be won in those buildings in the Christian churches. Yeah. Because that's I'm, where the majority of the people are in. But I'm going to tell you, you know, right now, I, the most high right now, and I'm, I'm the, I mean, the only euphemism or example I can use right mm -hmm. now, you, you're a fighter. Mm -hmm. You understand. And, you know, you grew up a fighter. Mm -hmm. 
uh, mixed martial arts and all that. The only example I can use with, with, you know, <laughs> with a little satire is that the fact that the Christian church is getting bodied right now. <laughs> okay. And I'm going yeah. I'm to be straight with you. That's yeah. why he even said, listen, these millennials aren't going for what used to work for be, yeah. the, you know, the old time gospel. Well, this is over. The most high is hitting these churches with uppercuts and hooks. And I'm going to tell you right now, it's to the degree, and I know this, and I've mentioned this before, and setting up these churches, our churches, Israelites are growing. Mm -hmm. And we're growing out of those who are leaving the Christian church or yeah. didn't believe at all. You'd be surprised how many atheists who were baptized in this church mm -hmm. because the Christian church couldn't explain to them mm -hmm. the common sense written of in the Bible. Mm -hmm. So the atheists know how to convert or to th throw shade or doubt on a believer because the Christians haven't learned under theologian teachings, they, didn't, they, they really don't have a great yeah. argument against atheists. Yeah. And many atheists have been converted and come into the truth. But going mm -hmm. back to Christians, mm -hmm. we found out that a lot of pastors with buildings, they can't hardly sell the buildings mm -hmm. because they're not worth what it was when they purchased it. Mm -hmm. And in order for them to keep the doors open, they must rent the church to three separate pastors where... Church, they're having churches in two-hour shifts mm -hmm. because people are not going to church like that anymore. Yeah, They're having three services in one day in the black church. Yeah, the boomers, this is dropping. Exactly. And yeah. they're written out the church hourly now. Yeah. Why? Because people are leaving it. Mm -hmm. So the most high he's fulfilled, he says he's going to begin to d destroy the idols of these churches. Mm -hmm. And the most high is hitting these black churches with uppercuts, hooks, left hooks, rights. Uh, mm -hmm. uh, jabs, me, uh, yeah. uh, you know, and, 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 and let me yeah, I'm, I'm go ahead. Finish your thought. I know I'm being a little facetious mm -hmm. here, but you know what? And if if the churches continue to compromise, the Most High will continue to tear it down. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. If you continue to allow it to be taken over to the degree where anyone, it started off not just with the civil rights movement, but allowing women to become pastors over churches. Mm -hmm. And then you have people sitting back, others looking like, listen, we know that the Bible says a woman is not supposed to be in position. The 12 disciples were men. Mm -hmm. Okay, Christ was a man. So what's to stop others from looking at that and saying, well, y'all let women in? Well, why can't gay people be in there? Mm -hmm. What's the difference? God mm -hmm. said don't do it and y'all, you all are allowing it. Mm -hmm. And it's where we are today. It, it's, it, it has taken the church. The church is on a downward spiral. And the only saving grace the Most High have out there, folks, is the truth of who our people are. If you're not teaching this, you're going to lose that congregation because those people don't belong to you. They belong to the God of Israel. You know, it's funny you just mentioned about yeah. the churches. You know, you know, New York, we, you know, we're looking for our own building now and things of that nature. Yeah. Uh, but, you know, we, we rent space from other churches and you know, things of that nature. Yeah. And one of the things that every pastor or deacon or person that gets to see the population that comes in every Shabbat, okay. the number one thing is, how do you get these young people in this church? Exactly. They are, how do you do it? And they're calling me, asking me, what, what do you do? What kind of program? We're Can just we teaching work the together? truth. And, you know, I was like, I'm not doing anything. Teach it. We just, you're doing a lot, brother. You're teaching You know, you know truth, I'm just man. doing it. Yeah, I'm doing the scripture. Yeah. I'm not, there's no yes. secret. There's no, you know, yeah. he's thinking we're doing some profound yeah. hip, yeah, you know, yeah, thing yeah, with yeah, the young yeah. people. Are, no, we're yeah. not doing none of that. What type of philosophy? They, yeah. Because yeah. they used to it being a gimmick. What, what may, Maybe it's the purpose-driven life. Maybe yeah. it's that. No, it's no gimmick at all. Yeah. You know what? The truth actually works. Our <laughs> children are looking for it. Exactly. And, and yeah. And I'm glad you're dropping that because now you can have a contract with a building and you will have pastors come through. And even Fresnel told me about this. Mm. They'll see the church packed with Israelites, our people who was once in the Christian church. And they, the next Sunday, no one's in there. Mm -hmm. You will have the pastor who's written out Sabbath. Mm -hmm. Wasn't making no money on the Sabbath. They've written it to us. Mm -hmm. And they'll look at the people in there and start counting the number and, and just want to tear up the contract mm -hmm. to, char <laughs> to charge with a new lease. 
They, they want a new lease because there's people on Saturday and not Sunday. Uh-huh. Yeah. Listen, this Saturday was here before we, got, before, before we begin to rent in your church. Mm -hmm. You ignored it. Mm -hmm. this, this, the people on this Sabbath wouldn't have been here if it was Sunday worship. Mm -hmm. So what's keeping your church together is the Lord's Sabbath. Mm -hmm. But yet they're looking at how to grandize themselves off of it instead of saying, maybe I we should try this. <laughs> <laughs> maybe we should try this. Yeah. <laughs> yeah, the younger people are smarter yeah. than, 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 than yeah. our fathers, man. You yeah. got to listen to the young people. And, and, these, the and guess what? These are pastors, too. They call it... They, they want to tear up the contract and say, well, no, we got we to gotta renegotiate. We didn't know that y'all had people coming like that. What do you think? This is a hustle or something, brother? <laughs> I'm giving you what you said you wanted. What, what's up with this? Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. But you know what? Because it's hard for them to keep their doors open, folks. Mm -hmm. Without the truth, the most, let me tell you, the most high is tearing down these churches. It's to the degree where there's a compromise where it's now okay. Well, the LBGT have become a serious political mm -hmm. juggernaut for the last decade. Mm -hmm. So now they must pander to the only constituents left. Mm -hmm. Because the, the, the LBGT wants to be invited, wants mm, to be included in the Christian church. That's profound. So now they're saying, well, hey, we had to have the women pastors if you get stay desperate. because there was nothing but women. Yeah. Now we must compromise to this degree, because mm. they want to become a part of something, and if we don't invite them in, we're losing all Before the millennials. Well, you know, this had the gay, exact, the transgender, exact. they have the, you know, all exact. kinds of different. So they're forced, they're handcuffed. <laughs> okay, exactly. Because of the mm. original compromise, they must continue the compromise or, cl or close the doors. They're not turning that, the, that generation over. Exactly. You know, it's grandmothers. I, I, you know, I love my mom. I go yeah. to a church. She gets a little storefront. Yeah. Everybody is 60 and older. Everybody. Yeah. Still playing they, the tambourines. Yeah, yeah, they, and there's about no, eight people up in there. Yeah. And then you know, I, and I'm, side, yeah, I come and pick you, her up, give her a kiss. Yeah, my, yeah. And then she's like, come. And it's okay. You know, it's, it's okay, okay because she's still, she's comfortable. She's used to the people she's yeah, around. She's holding, you know. Hey. And, 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 and it's, 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 it's a sad situation, but the older generation has to listen to the, 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 the you know, What's yeah. going on? Yeah. And don't be set in their ways. Yeah. You know, and, and things of that nature. And it was funny because my mother, you know, bless her, you know, we were always talking about the Sabbath and things of that nature. She was always against it. Yeah. And there was a pastor from the from, uh, Dominican Republic. Yeah. And he started looking at the Sabbath. Yeah. And it's like, well, we have to start to keep it a Sabbath. And then finally it got, because he was an older around her age. Yeah. He was renowned and respected and from that generation. Mm -hmm. She started considering, okay, maybe, maybe, okay, we could keep both, you know, yeah. you know, things like that. It's, it, it's, it, it, but, you know, I think what's going to happen is, is that, and it, because even older people waking up, you got, yes. yeah, I baptized yeah. people in their sixties and yeah. their fifties and said, listen, I've been, and I knew, always knew something was wrong. And, yep. and, and, and when I saw it, I, 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 I heed the call. So I think it's, just, it's, it's a profound thing. That we seen this, yeah, and, and 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 because when I was coming up, this would never happen. Non-existent, you know. There was always brothers from the hood. There was always brothers from the ghetto. We Israel, they, they could see it because we, we, we saw it because we were the struggle. Yeah, we read through. Let me tell you something. The color scripture never really. I was never really into that. Yeah, that Deuteronomy twenty eight, man. Yeah, man. Woo. Yeah, that was it. Uh, yeah. I don't need no color scriptures. Deuteronomy, That's us. Deuteronomy 28, uh, like uh, I said, I, that, uh, you I know, mean, that metaphor of being body, that yeah. Deuteronomy 28 you know, bodies. Exactly. It. Yeah, yeah. Uh, it, it, it's, it's uh, amen. So, Absolutely, so, amen. You know, we, we, right. we, we, you know, but now even the people that are respected and, uh, you know, uh, uh, you know, uh, perhaps the are professionals, professional. the highly respected, those who, are, who would have never sniffed the word Israelite, or, right? Or, or sniffed the thought, or even thought about Israel. Yeah, and it's profound. It's coming from the it's coming from the ground up, like the brother just said. And that's because it's now it's heading. It's, it's now it's, getting, it's affecting them. It's heading up. Yeah, it's heading up uh, amongst uh, amongst the to, the to do the to do good. Yeah, the, yeah. The, the professors. Yeah. Okay, the theologians. He's yeah. a theologian. Yeah. He have a doctrine. Mm -hmm. The Most High is moving. He did that. Look at Paul. Paul was, he, he understood many languages. Yeah. 
He yeah. was a Pharisee, you yeah. name it. But let me tell you, the Roman most citizen, high, yeah. he's knocking down doors, yeah. folks. And Ooh. you know what? And also, we have to, I'll be amiss if I didn't shout out a lot of our brothers and sisters like you all. Mm -hmm. Don't take for granted some of the jewels you'll be dropping on people. Mm -hmm. You think that it's falling on deaf ears? No. We get those phone calls where a brother or sister said, well, I just ran into a, a brother or sister. Someone was talking to me in a, a restaurant or in a supermarket, and I just had to call because they gave me this, and I seen y'all videos, and I had to call. Mm -hmm. Don't, don't, you, you all are yeah. doing more work out there than, than you think. think. Mm -hmm. Okay, mm -hmm. than you think, right? Yeah, also, uh, before we take the next call, yeah. I'm make a quick announcement. Okay, uh, you know, I'm going to be traveling certain areas, so yeah. I want these people to know where I'm going to be and things of that nature. Syracuse, New York, okay? Uh, we're going to be on the, I'm going to be up there on... Let's see, August 31st, okay, to, not this Saturday, next Saturday, okay, and whatever's going on up there, that's not GOCC. When we establish, when we go up there, we're going to meet with the brothers and the sisters, and we're going to establish the Gadden Christ Church in Syracuse when I get there and things like that nature. So whatever other people are doing, that's, that's not, not us. us. That's not us. If they, okay. if they claim they're with us and they're in Syracuse, okay. they're lying. Yeah. So just because they call in the name of Ahia, exactly. okay, and Yeshia, which they're learning from us, yes. okay, from the elders of the church, this is, if, if, it doesn't mean they're with us. We have to ordain people yeah. to teach and, and lead the flock. Exactly. And we're going to, you know, so I'm going to be up there. And if you look, if you are in Syracuse in that area upstate and you're looking to fellowship, Okay, you send an email or send a, uh, you know send an email to gocnyc at gmail.com. Yeah. Gocnyc at gmail.com, and we'll let you know uh, what area we're gonna be to establish something up in, in Syracuse. Also, the brothers in Kentucky, I haven't forgot about you. We're gonna be heading up there as well. I know you guys have been patiently waiting and going to uh, the uh, Ohio. Uh, area, so you just keep going to Ohio for the time being until we say establish something in the near future. So I just want to also drop that. Okay, and another thing I wanted to say, one moment. Yeah. Ah, ah, ah. One second here. That's him right there. Yeah, another thing I wanted to say real quick, uh, yeah, tomorrow we'll be going to uh, to look at the venues for the album release. Oh, yes, absolutely. Uh, October 6th, we will, we, will, we will be doing the the album release party. Yeah. I think the venue will hold about 500 people yeah. and it's going to be limited seats for those who would like to be a part of it. Uh, next week, we'll be making the official announcement and, and soon you'll be able to purchase tickets if you'd like to be a part of the yeah. uh, the official release of the Gathering of Christ Church's album. Uh, it's going to be called Purpose. It's going to be a two-set uh, CD, 12. One purpose is Inspire and the other... 12 will be praise and we're going to have yeah. we're going to try to have a short play there mm -hmm. as well as a short play we're going to also work on having a um a fashion show yeah. and you know we're going to have the israelite gear the yeah. modest the yeah. nice looking gear yeah. and we're going to have the release party showing the music and bringing forth praise of the most high with the release right now we have a song out there that's gaining momentum called a higher powers with me mm. Uh, I'm singing it. We have Maestro Michael mm. Bat Batiste. He's on the music, and you can get that Google. You can go to Google Play. You can go to iTunes and type in Rakarshiar, my name, or A Higher Power was with me, and support the music. is gaining a lot of momentum right now. Yeah. And we're going to use this music as a vehicle to get into some of these churches, to do more community service, to throw free concerts in the neighborhood and drop the fact that the Bible is a black man's or a black book, that black our is black history, mm -hmm. and we can get away from the, the atheist thinking, the immoral thinking, the thug thinking, and bring, and not only that, bring morality and respect back to the name of Israel. And that's what it's yeah. about. This music is going to be about keeping relationships together, together. Even if we're having issues, why don't we love each other through this? Yeah. Okay. Endurance. We're gonna deal with songs about Christ coming back. We have the choir. Yeah. Uh, we also have some man. The videos are higher powers with me. Save me. Um. Uh. You have us all. You you have individuals like myself and others at one time, who thought we were alone in this fight. 
Mm-hmm. And we were just asking, Lord, just save me through this. I know you exist. Mm-hmm. I mean, just show me. Give me a sign. I'm giving up. And, and no sooner as that happened, the Most High the next day revealed that he was listening. And mm-hmm. that's the song, Save Me. Mm-hmm. Okay, mm-hmm. we have on there. A Slave's Journey. We're going to do a video where it starts off from the shores of Africa. And the same man that actually drug us over here and enslaved us mm. is now learning from us at the end of mm. the slave's journey. Mm. I mm. mean, every song, mm. it's, it will be with a purpose mm. to mm-hmm. bring us together and to serve the living God. So please support the, the album. Yeah, I, believe it's gonna, album. I believe it's going to be groundbreaking yeah. uh, as far as making sure that the right representation of music is out there and that music isn't lost. It's just been hijacked. It's been co-opted by those other people who are promoting the wrong music for our children. And it's time that we fight fire, fire, with, fire. Amen. with water. With water. <laughs> <laughs> Let's fight, fight fire, fire with that, water. That's an Ivan Parisher right there. I want to get that tonight. <laughs> Let's fight fire, fire with water. water. Get baptized. In the name Man, of the that's a shirt, man. That's a shirt right there. I am apparel. So support that album. Okay, yes. we're going to be doing a lot more. You know, we're yeah. gonna, we're gonna, this is going to be the, the, the first uh, beta test, as you will. And if this is successful, we believe we will. We're going to be going to different cities. We're going to be going to Atlanta. We're going to be going to Florida. We're going to be going to uh, Texas. We're going to be going to California. And soon, Africa. Africa. We have the Africa mm-hmm. Initiative. We're going to be okay. doing a hey, okay. so, all over the earth. And I Am Apparel, we're going to make the white garments. We're going to have white garments for sisters, different designs and all that. So soon you'll be able to go to IamApparel.org children's yep. gear yep. and guess what our choir we're going to clothe our choir mm. especially for the the video that yep. we have to do Amen. and hey you're mm. going to see white everywhere in every city you're going to see white mm. and that mm. we're not going to be talking about the commandments and talking about christ in the community feeding our people being the forerunners helping us transition in this time of transition yeah and what we're going to also Kingdom we're going to be doing also we're starting uh, in sponsoring uh, uh, youth basketball teams. Exactly. Yeah, I don't know we're going to be sponsoring the exactly. uniforms. Uh, you know, we, we, uh, so the congregation, we're going to come together with the different elders. And because usually in the summers, usually mothers, yep. they say, you know, elders, my son, he's getting in trouble. Yeah. He's hanging out. So we're going to set up, you know, basketball leagues. Basketball leagues, summers, after school that, you know, programs. All that. that yes. That, uh, we're going to yes. be, you know, Actually, different church compete against each other, and we can also, you know, have have a little, you know, basketball lead for the youth. So that's coming soon. We're working on that. Last year we did, we had uh, the New York Giant Slayer against the Philly Majestics and things on it. Yeah, yeah, success yeah. And things. I think we had, I think New Jersey's getting yes. a basketball team together for the Tabernacle, and also DMV is working on that. So we're gonna different programs also for the youth. We're gonna be doing that then. So so this that's coming down the pipe as well. Someone asked, excuse me, how come in your Hebrew and Bible Academy you guys never teach the whole laws of Exodus and Deuteronomy? Well, the whole thing is we more so and we teach the laws, but yeah. we more so teach the doctrinal differences to tear down the strongholds that've been taught in the minds of our people. Yeah, you know you understand. Uh, how many times can we teach not to eat pork chops? Mm-hmm. How many times can we teach not to steal? If you can't follow the Ten Commandments, mm-hmm. then we have a long way to go. Yeah. And usually the other laws that's written up in Deuteronomy and Exodus are there. Why? Because we break the Ten. Right. If you follow the Ten, the other ones will be made void. Yeah. Because if you steal, there's about a hundred laws yeah. Of, of restitution and restoration for, yeah. for a person that you stole from. Yeah. If you commit adultery or fornication, there's a thousand, there's a hundred different laws now that you must fulfill mm-hmm. based on you breaking that law. Yeah, if but if you didn't commit fornication or didn't sin, I wouldn't have to teach the whole Deuteronomy concerning the laws yeah. of restitution and restoration. When you go into the scripture, like <laughs> it's there's simple. like the law of quarrel against a brother, right? Exactly. There's three chapters just dedicated in this scenario, that scenario. Exactly. But if they don't, if they just keep the first, the, the royal commandment, love your neighbor as yourself. Exactly. All those other, you know, chapters aren't even necessary. Exactly. So a lot the of rest the, of the yeah. laws are in place for if you actually break one of the yeah. ten. After you, 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 yeah. you already did something wrong. Exactly. You know? So that's why. But 
again, you know what? And online, we do have the law and the spirit of the law, which is the class in itself, breaking down the 10. Yeah, there's a problem. And if you, yeah, and if you follow those 10, the other laws are made void because there's no restitution or restoration or, or having to, you know, mm -hmm. uh, uh, having to apologize for having art if you didn't do art in the first place. Mm -hmm. So, the, and when it comes to things like not having your cotton with polyester and things of that nature, I understand that too, that you're not supposed to wear linens of different, of, of two separate linens yeah, linen in one, yeah. right? And we try the best we can in I Am Apparel to make sure the stuff we sell, it's one fabric of whatever, 100% of what that is. Yeah. But the reality is, are you going to go around to everyone that's popping tags and look at it and say, hold up, yeah. man, there's polyester in that. Yeah. So there's certain things that, you know, and, and let me just make some, you know, some clarification while swallowing the camel. Yeah. But it says, thou should not mix uh, linen with wood. Yeah. With woolen. Is with the word linen there, the, the Hebrew word there is flax, flax. Is meaning uh, material that comes from plant. Yeah. So if you have cotton blend with uh, a linen, blend they both come from with plants yeah it's when you mix a material that comes from animals with a material yeah, a that comes with with, with 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 flax exactly you know but flax is flax and things like that. so sometimes people so you could have like for instance a mix of a little some cotton with a little uh a linen that's fine because it all comes from flax. Yeah. It all comes from flax. I don't want you to clarify that and then okay. if you get a guy that's looking at your looking at your border and say man what color is that border of blue? That should be purple. Yeah. You know yeah, what you that's do? That's going out there too, yeah. Ignore him. Yeah. Okay. That's, that's what Christ states when he says, you strain at a gnat mm -hmm. and swallow a camel. Mm -hmm. You'll tell us that the border of blue should be purple, mm -hmm. but denounce or renounce the baptism of Christ. Yeah. You're, back, <laughs> you're, you're, you're backwards. Yeah. Find out Christ, and then we can work out the color of the border of blue right. later. Yeah, exactly. Okay? I wanted to put that out there. Because you have somebody, you, you, you know, yeah, it's, it, that's a new thing now. Israelite yeah. philosophers. Yeah, you, do you know that's, that, that blue Thank is really Thank you for using purple? Blog Talk Radio. Yeah. Goodbye. Right? Oh. All right. I think that's the oh, end of that? Blog Talk. Yeah. Yeah, I think. I don't think I can. Let's see. Yes, okay, that's it. that's it. I tried to talk, but I'm finished. Hey, all praises be to the Most High. I thank Ramar for producing, getting Dr. Thurron Williams on this evening. And I thank you for your participation and your, your continual support of the Gathering of Christ Church. This couldn't be without your help. And I want to let you know we love and respect all of you for, for enduring with us. We also like to thank A.C. Anthony, who work with us for three hours almost, setting up <laughs> our production, as you see before you now, where the sound is and everything is flawless now yep. with our new mixer, and we'll be coming with you to you with a better production going forward. So with that, I would like to say shalom to my brothers and sisters. Have a careful and spiritual night. Stay prayed up. Sin not. We will soon see Zion. Shalom. Shalom. My brothers and sisters All right, sure. you know what let's leave them out with a little music here yeah. just a little something just a little something for my people a higher power's with me make sure you get the project You think that I can't see A higher power's with me A higher power's with me Let me see if I can find a little bit of the song Just type in Elder Ricard Shiar Get the project Let's see if the song on here I don't know if it's on here Let's see Ah, here we go Here's a little bit of it. 
for you all. They created in space. Oh, yeah. You can do what you want to do. They tap our phones. We know you're listening. But you can't stop us. The truth is rising. We You think that I can't see? See what you're doing to me, yo. Our hands on your heel, I'm pulling through. They think that I can't see. A higher power's with me. Bless you, brothers and sisters. Get the project. Love you. Shalom. Oh. Time to 